Greetings from Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia, where the Georgia Southern Eagles of the Southern Conference will host the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers of the Big South right here on CSS. Good evening, I'm Mark Bryant. Joining me in the booth, my broadcast partner, Tracy Ham. Glad to have you back for another week. It's good to be with you again, Mark. And it's good to have an exciting matchup like this in front of us, starting with the home team, Georgia Southern, and their head coach, Brian Van Gorder, whose debut did not go the way he wanted. Certainly, as a head coach, you want to open up with a winning season. However, as a head coach, you also understand it is a long season, and you want to make sure that you get your kids to play your type of football. And the coach's type of football is strong defense, and anchoring that strong defense after a one-game suspension, senior linebacker John Mooring. Certainly, the defense will be glad to get John Mooring back. He's a senior, and his ability to tackle football will be key into the success of Joy Southern defense tonight. Now on the other side of the ball for the Eagles, running back Chris Covington came out of the gate just on fire last week. More than 200 yards for Covington. Anytime you run for 200 plus yards in a ball game, you give your uh, team a chance to win. And that's exactly what Chris Covington uh, was able to accomplish last week. And I think that'll be key tonight in success of Joyce Southern offense. Now the other squad we have here, a very hungry Coastal Carolina team, only in its fourth year of existence, led by Coach David Bennett. Coach David Bennett has done an excellent job in growing his players. Um, they have a lot of fifth year seniors and they have the ability to come in and win ball games on the road. So it'll be an interesting test for his ball club tonight. And one of those seniors he's got playing out there tonight, one of the best offensive players in all of 1AA is Tyler Thigpen, the quarterback. Tyler Thigpen has certainly shown that he's capable of leading an offense and a team to victories. He's done an excellent job of keeping his team in ball games, and he's done a job, an excellent job of not turning the ball over. So they'll count on him tonight on the road. Excellent. It's Georgia Southern hosting Coastal Carolina right here on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Welcome to Paulson Stadium, Statesboro, Georgia. The Coastal Carolina Chanticleers visiting the Georgia Southern Eagles. We're getting close to kickoff now and crowd getting pumped up. They want to see the first victory of the year for the Eagles. They hope to have seen it last week, but they didn't get it. Central Connecticut State dealt them a bit of a blow with a 17-13 surprise here in Statesboro. And they don't they don't take kindly to losing around here, do they, Trace? No, they don't, don't take kindly to losing at all, Mark. I think one of the things when you lose a ball game, I, uh, the biggest curve of coaching and players is from week one to week two because you learn a lot about your ball club. And so we'll see tonight how much Joyce Southern learn about themselves in order to get themselves on track for a victory. Getting set to kick off for Coastal Carolina, Josh Hoke. Hoke is one of those guys who's been with the program for, for these from the very beginning. He's a redshirt senior. This is the fourth year they played, between, but they had a year of practice before that to get, get set up. So between the seniors and the redshirt seniors, they have a lot of upperclassmen. The kick is up and received by number 21, Raja Andrews. He's out past the 15 to the 20 and down. And that is where the Eagles will begin their first drive of the game. If you're going to win ball games on the road, you certainly have to do a good job in the special teams department. I think Coach Bennett understands that as they prepare for the first defensive stance here is how well are they special team? The first kickoff, they keep them at the 20 so you can see that they're well prepared in the special teams department. There we see Andrews, the sophomore wide receiver from Swainsboro leaving the field. The Eagles will begin in an eye, and their quarterback is number 14, Travis Clark, the transfer from Southern Miss, who had some, who had a few highlights last week, but several moments he'd like to forget. He's going to begin with a pitch to Chris Covington, who finds open space. He's got blocks. He is past midfield, and he is going to go. And he's got one man who could possibly catch him on the angle. Down to the five. What a great play, and it was the option that opened the game up right off the bat, Mark. What a great decision by the quarterback, Travis Clark. Chris Covington, who had 216 yards rushing last week, is going to start 
with about 75 on the first play. Well, he certainly didn't miss a beat here. You see a great decision by Clark. Excellent pitch. Great blocking by the wide receiver, number nine, Smiley. Did a great job blocking downfield blockers. Are credit, doing credit Covington for that change of direction right there. Nice He goes back, back against the grain, and that really opens this up. Certainly a great cutback. He's going to let these fans get a taste of the option. The first play of the game, and you get a, just a big play out of it. Great job by the offensive line. Now he's going to line up in a four-wide receiver set with only Covington back there with him, and Clark gets the shotgun snap. He's going to keep it himself, but he's met by a host of Chanticleers on the right side. Well, the defense held their ground in. Uh, they did a good job of maintaining the line of scrimmage leverage on the offensive line. Now, for the folks who aren't familiar with the Georgia Southern situation, they've, they've played football for 25 years here in the, in the modern era of Georgia Southern football, and it's been virtually all triple option attack till... Oh, about last week. Last week. And uh, and so to come out of the gate today with an option play gets the crowd's juices pumping because that's what they've seen for a quarter century. And as we start second down here, you can see the fans standing at their feet because they really want to see some good things happen early for this ball club. Clark hands off to Covington. Finding room on the left side, pushing toward the goal line. He's close. They will mark him inside the one. What a great push by the left side of the offensive line for Georgia Southern. Covington is doing a really good job of going downhill, following this block, and I think that's a, a, a very talented back when you can, as you see the replay here, uh, you'll see that he does a great job of getting in the hip pocket of his offensive line and downhill. Yeah, he's got big Rickory Green there, and uh, Rickory Green get him, get him that good block, get him down to the one. You know, that ruins his average per carry, though. <laughs> it took it from 75 yards of carry down to 40. Oh, you got a feel for it. First, Trav Travis Clark, the play clock running down, he'll call timeout. First big play of the game here, the defensive stance from the defensive side of the ball. Can they hold him to three? And if it's fourth down, do you go for it if you don't get it on third down? 12.38 left in the opening quarter, and right now the offense is centered around the, the one big play, and it was it was Covington as, as you know, build today. He's he's the big guy carrying the ball for the Eagles. Now let's let's talk about the keys to the game, Tracy. Let's talk about those ham bone keys to victory here. Well, Tracy Ham. Yeah, I just think it's so important that Georgia Southern football team put football first. A lot of things have happened to this ball club over the summer to this point, and now they have to put football first. And then they got to take care of the football. I think if you're going to win, no matter if you're home on the way, you have to do a good job of taking care of the ball. And then on the defensive side, Georgia Southern defense has to put pressure on um, Tyler. He has. They have to get pressure on the quarterback in order for them to uh, to win it. Now for Coastal Carolina, if they're going to win the ball game, they need to score early. It looks like Georgia Southern is about to score early, but they need to score to put the pressure on Georgia Southern, and then they need to stop the run, which they haven't yet. So, and also they need to force fumbles, force turnovers, or interception. So here we go with this goal to go situation. Third and one from the one. The officials set the ball. Clark under center. He's got his backs in the eye. Reddick and Covington. He's got he's got Green in motion. Green in an eligible position lays down a block. Covington fighting for everything. The defense snuffed the whole thing out. Wow, just just a surprise of a call. We tossed the ball there. It was on the one yard line. Looked like we tried to get outside of them. Um, so they're gonna have to go through. What a great stance for Coastal Carolina. As we see, we toss the ball here. They just out leverage Coastal Carolina out leverage Georgia Southern on that play there. And so despite Covington getting 80 yards of, of rushing, it's going to be a field goal attempt for number 13, Jonathan Dudley, the senior who uh, struggled a bit last week. And Jason Foster picks it up. He's got nobody to throw to. He's trying to make something on his own, working back up the middle. He could get in. He does. Jason Foster. <laughs> what a great. Jason Foster, they're so familiar with him. Could have been a disaster there. Jason Foster turned a disaster into the second big play of the ball game. And you look at him, you go, wow. Look at the moves. Look at the balance. And he gets to stay out there and hold for the extra point. Here he is again, doing it all on his own. Jason has done that for the last two years, and you can see his balance, his ability to run with the football. And so here's the try. It is right down the middle. And so Georgia Southern does what they could not do last week. Get on the board quickly, get on the board first with some strong running, a little, uh, 
a little ingenuity out there where they where they could uh, from their star players, Covington and Foster. And it is 7-0 Georgia Southern out in front. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Back here at Paulson Stadium, and we see Jason Foster there. The holder on the field goal try is going to try and pull off his own personal miracle here. And despite Despite the best efforts of several of the Chanticleers, he manages to squeak through and find the end zone, and that is our score right now. 7-0 Eagles over the visiting Coastal Carolina Chanticleers. At this point in the season, that is the single biggest play for Coach Van Gordon and his team this year because that went from a disaster to a positive. And I think if you're gonna, if you're gonna be a good football team, you have to turn what appear to be a somewhat of a disaster into a positive. So Dudley kicking off. Deep man for the Chanticleers. Number 38, Brent Meyer. Gets it back to about the 20 yard line. And here are the starters up front for the Chanticleers. Leggett, Bame, Tolbert in the middle, Keppel and Poston. Next group for Coastal Carolina behind the uh, the offensive line. Of course, we've got Tyler Thigpen, the quarterback, and he'll be aided by running back number one, Andres Perkins, fullback Mike Tolbert, as well as tight end Rodney Burgess, and the wide receiver Simpson and Noble. I tell you, Jerome Simpson, incredible hands. He usually makes a couple good circus catches every game. And we need to keep a close Shotgun eye Shotgun snap Tolbert. is direct to Perkins, who reverses field there to number 23. That <laughs> is... Tim Carson, wow, they're pulling one out of their out of the books early. Here are yeah. the uh, Chanticleers. Well, I, I think they understand that this is a big series, big drive for them. They don't want to lose field position. I'm surprised the trickery come out this early, but in any event, uh, it was a successful play for them. Now for the Eagles on defense, Sherrod Taylor, Jerry Barker, you see Daniel and Solomon helping out on the defensive line. That's the first ten, first and ten play. There's the linebackers, Benefield, Lewis, and of course Mooring. They'll be depending on him a great deal. Handoff up the middle is Perkins. Sheds off the first two and three tacklers and still going out past the 35-yard line. My goodness, what a tough run. Well, the key for them is going to be Tobit. Tobit is going to be one of the big keys. The fullback, he's 5'10", 240 pounds. He just created a gaping hole for Tobit to run through then. And you can see that that is was it's such a low when you have a fullback at 250. The end of no hole offense. So well, and when the tailback's 245 on his own, that, it's that. A, that's a couple hammers right there. Yeah. Andres Perkins, big gainer, and it's going to be Perkins met hard by Mooring. And he makes his presence known early. Right, and that's what the question was. Was Mooring come back, and would he make big plays? And would he get the defense fired up? The first play, he makes a big play, attacking for a loss in the backfield coming through the back door. We were here last week with CSS, and I'll tell you what, I, I don't remember seeing a play look quite like that last week. We Nobody made a hard hit in the backfield like that. Nobody made a hard hit in the backfield, you're correct. And Mooring makes the first big hit of the game, and I think that's what they were expecting from Joy Southern, Mooring. Waiting on the second down, now second and 12. Thig Penn trying to go up top on the right side. Too long. It'll be third and long now. Well, one of the keys to the game was could George Southern put pressure on um, the quarterback for Coastal Carolina, and right off the bat, you saw a corner blitz to put pressure on, on Tyler. 10-25 remaining in the first quarter. Georgia Southern with the 7-0 lead, and the visitors with their first big down situation a third and 12 for coastal carolina program out of conway south carolina they're watching us back there today conway near myrtle beach coastal plays in the big south but folks they're playing they're playing as many games in the southern conference this year as they are in the big south i'll explain in a minute hold up hand off to the left side and very close to a first down i think they're going to mark him less than a yard short on this one big play there by number 33, Arthur Sitton. Arthur did a, Sitton did a great job of finding the hole, getting outside, using his speed. You can see the offensive line do a great job. And then we just missed, Joy Southern just missed the tackle right there by number 23. And Mooring's in there to help finish it off. Mooring's, Mooring's name and number are gonna get called a lot today. Uh, when we were here in Statesboro for games last year, we were quite familiar with John Mooring. He was missed last week, and he's, he's making his presence known. They are going on fourth and a half yard. Thigpen hands off left side to Perkins, who gets it, but fumbles. No, he's down. 
Oh, that ball popped out, but they say he was already. Popped out pretty quickly there. I thought um, they did a good job of getting the first down. I thought it was a good decision by Coach Bendy. You're on the road. You're in between the field goal or the punt, as you see here, where they get to do a good job of getting the ball upfield just doing a good job of getting the ball it, it's really a, a counter there because a lot of the blockers are forcing everything to the right of the line and he comes off to the left and some of the eagles followed it to, to the uh, to the to the wrong direction certainly uh, you can see that coastal line is a very porous group i think that's the first thing that jumps out uh at the people the fans who have not seen coastal Carolina play they're very porous you can see they're very well coached as well a little uh confusion on that play here's the call And that's going to back the Chanticleers up five yards. Now, for the folks who, who aren't familiar with the Coastal Carolina program, again, this is only their fourth year of existence, uh, but they, they've, they have fifth-year players because they spent one year essentially as a practice year getting everybody ready to play football. So they've got redshirt seniors. They've got regular seniors out there, a lot of seniors on the field, including Tyler Thigpen, the quarterback. For the Chanticleers, number 16 takes the shotgun snap, immediately fires to his left, and he's got Simpson out there. Simpson inside the 30, number 19 wide receiver. And I think they can do that all day. Uh, once they spread the field out, they had three one set where he had three, three receivers to the field, one to the weak side, and one back in the backfield. And great protection. You can see he just pitch and catch right there very simple football and Simpson is not going to drop a lot of balls he's very skilled out there and it's, he's got he's got space if they're going to give him a couple steps he's going to make that catch right and the secondary has to do a good job of tackling the ball if they're going to be successful in motion is Chris Noble this is going to be Thigpen keeping he's surrounded and swarmed under for no gain maybe one on the play you can see the impact that Morin has on the defensive side of the ball for Georgia Southern and I think Coastal Carolina will have to do a better job of blocking him if they're going to be successful running the football. Coastal Carolina sporting the teal fans white shirts and Georgia Southern in their very traditional blue and white. The third down play Thigpen trouble with the snap rolling right fires in to his receiver who's got it inside the 15. It's number 82 Santini Washington with a first down for the visitors. I don't think you can ever underestimate having a senior at quarterback. The poise, the leadership that he showed just rifled the ball in there. What a great job by Tyler Thigpen and the protection was well. George Southern brought a blitz in but the protection picked up the blitz allowed him to get outside to see his receiver. Tracy you played quarterback. How tough is it when you're juggling the snap in the air like that to still roll to your right and complete a pass? Well, as quarterback, sometimes you have to be a magician. Perkins through the middle. Hole closed quickly. He may have gotten two on that play. I, I like what Coastal Carolina is doing. They have a very balanced attack. Uh, they're throwing on running situation, and they're running in throwing situation. You saw the draw early. You saw the second down and medium. It would tend to be a running down, but they rolled out expecting the blitz, got what they thought. Great preparation by Coach Bennett and his staff. They're mixing up formations too. It's it's a it's a good multiple look that they they really bring out there. It's it is. We've talked a lot about uh, about last week about Georgia Southern and their new offense. We referred to it earlier today. But there there were changes in the coastal offense as well. They had some growing pains with that week one and their loss to Elon. They got over it in week two in defeating Wofford. Thigpen rolling to his left. He's got a man out there. Almost overthrows his receiver, but still down to the one yard line is number 18. Who is uh, who is not on the roster? Would you believe that they got a, they got mystery man out there? Well, Mr. <laughs> mystery man did an excellent job then with the with the first protecting, moving the pocket, great play action, move the pocket to the left, and you see the mystery man as we look for his name <laughs> in our program catches the ball and does a good job for Coastal. I like what Coastal's doing on offense. They're doing a real good job of mixing the plays up as they. Power in for the touchdown. There it is on the right side. Perkins power in. What a great drive by Coastal. Perkins is, is strong. He was moving men every time he touched the ball in the end zone, and they're going to try and knock this game up with the extra point. If you're Coastal, you got to feel good about where you are and what you're doing. You seem to be able to You have a handle on what Joy Southern's trying to do to, to you defensively, and you're moving the pocket. You're catching them in blitz situation and you have the right play call, and that's preparation by your staff. Okay, Josh Hoke on for the point after. 
7-6 game at the moment. And kick is up. It's good. And that's going to tie us up right here. A very interesting first quarter of play as each side has gone the distance. One more time, the handoff. Perkins through the right side for the touchdown. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. It is a tie game, seven apiece, Georgia Southern and Coastal Carolina. And both sides have to feel really good about their, their offenses. Some big plays going each way. Some big players coming through when they needed them. And here's the kickoff from Josh Hope. Andrews and Maynard are back. It will be Raja Andrews. Blitzing through the 20 and rolling off a tackle to the 25 and a little bit more, maybe the 27 yard line. Nice job, Mark Beast Maynard. Well, great return, got him in good field position. Um, if, if, if when you set the two sides, if I'm coastal, I might feel a little better than Georgia Southern because I took a, got hit in the face and I withstood the hit. My offense came out and managed himself very well, picked up some blitzes, was able to get the ball in the end zone and not panic. And I think that's a tribute to Coach Bennett and his staff, as well as your offensive line and the senior leadership of Tyler Fickman. Two drives, two scores. We'll have to see if this one's going to turn out to be a shootout or not. Coastal's been involved in some high scoring uh, uh, times already this year. Last week's game was a real back and forth affair with Wofford. First carry here on this drive is going to get about four yards for the Eagles. By the way, folks, the uh, the mystery man on the on the Chanticleers drive was tight end Scott Fambro, number 18, uh, is a freshman from Dunwoody, Georgia. So he uh, well, we're just glad his parents <laughs> are in the stands, probably because he's from Dunwoody. But I hope the Coastal family will forgive us for that mistake. And so now, second and call it seven, Travis Clark calling signals, making some adjustments there and getting it off in time. He will hand off to number five, Greer, who is swarmed and will lose a yard on the play. Coastal defense is playing real aggressive football. And when you're on the road, you want your defense to, to carry. You want your defense to be aggressive. You want them to play on the other side of the line of scrimmage, which you can see there as number 58 gets in the backfield and it, puts pressure right off the bat on. It credits Sam Harper, 91, yeah. for Coastal with the stop there. And uh, he's one of those redshirt seniors. It's going to be yeah. third and seven. They'll he, say no gain on the play. Clark in shotgun. A fake blitz come out of it. Finds his man in the middle. McCutcheon running free toward the left. Gets ready for the hit at the 40. A flag sails. We'll have to see what that is. The umpire tossed one down at the 40-yard line. Well, it was involved the offensive lineman downfield as well as a defensive lineman, so um, we'll be interested to see what the call is because penalties is what plagued them. Great underneath throw by Travis. I'm, Travis getting himself in a rhythm, and you hate to see penalties stop an offense. Clark's got McCutcheon going all the way sideline to sideline on that one. I can tell you right now, Georgia Southern players clapping on the field as the officials huddle on what the uh, call will be, but early indication is that Coastal is going to back up on this. Looked like it was involved in number 90, Tony Williams, the defensive lineman uh, for They're going to add on cut. five for a face mask. Our head referee for this game, Ed Rhodes, making the call. It was umpire Wayne Rigsby who tossed the flag on that one. Mark, I think the fans are here uh, talk a lot about Coastal and their red shirt fifth year seniors uh, and all that means is simply is that you have a class that's been redshirted but they were allowed to play because they were not playing in NCAA football and it's essentially what Georgia Southern did when they started their program they played club ball for a year the entire class played redshirted them then their first year was their freshman year in competition four and a half minutes remaining in the opening period Clark with some pressure by the Chanticleers is going to throw it away he had a couple men in his face, including Harper, as well as Ronnie Mason. Ronnie Mason did a great job of putting pressure number 49. Ronnie Mason did a great job of putting pressure. But there you can see that, um, that Travis Clark has grown up a little from last week. Last week, uh, he may have tried an ill-advised pass. This week, he throws it out of bounds. He accepts the defense, won that series, and 
he threw it out of bounds, which is always a sign of maturity for a quarterback. I, I think last week almost was a bit of a hangover of the offensive change because they were still everything. All the run blocking was superb. Pass blocking when it was working, Clark found his man, but when it wasn't, he got in trouble. Covington, right side, inside the 40 to about the 35 or 36. He's going to be really close to a first down. Covington's just picked up way left off, and he's he's shown to be have the ability to pick his holes well, patient as a run. As you see him get the toss, great crack back blocks. Number 62 for Georgia Southern does a great job. That's and Russell and, Orr out front of him, and and you just got a patient runner running. A lot of successful running backs is how patient can they be or do they get overly impatient and not a lot of play to develop. His fullback Dusty Reddick was also way out there in front of him. You know, one question some folks may have out there is uh, is what the heck is a Chanticleer anyway? Uh, that one that one came up with some folks around here in Statesboro. I, I, I knew you was going to answer that, Fudman. So, I was waiting so on we're that. We're certainly going to address this while they measure. It, it, when you get right down to it, it's a rooster. Or, or, as, or as some folks in the Palmetto State like to say, it's the sophisticated chicken, the Chanticleer, <laughs> as opposed to the fighting chicken, which is the game cop, <laughs> okay. of course. So which you, would you prefer to be called? Well, uh, Chanticleer has, is, is uh, noble, Chanticleer. but it, does, it doesn't sound very football. Uh, but uh, game some people say Chanticleer, but uh, I've, I've been told it's in fact Chanticleer. And uh, it is technically, it, here's the quote, it is a rooster who rules the barnyard with cunning and wit. Well, there you go. There you have it. That's, well, you that have would the, be the final you, line on the story. You have the teal uniforms that goes with the Chanticleer. Yeah. So that, that's, you know, it's a It's a name that goes back. This I don't know how many collegiate names file, fit in this category, but it's a name that actually goes back to Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. Covington up the middle through the first tackler. Again, first contact, always a hard time bringing him down. In on the tackle, I'm pretty sure I saw number 90, Tony Williams, and some other coastal players joining him. Well, if you enjoy something, you gotta be happy about the, the flow of the game thus far. You've been able to run the ball with success on first down, and I thought last week they didn't do a very good job on first down. This week they're doing a, a better job on first down, and if you're coastal, you wanna limit the first down rushes you won't you don't want them to win first down because you win first down it's easy to win two, two weeks it. two weeks chris covington has had more than 80 yards in the first quarter in each game and he's got 94 on five carries today it he's going to get the ball again but he is hopped on in the backfield oh broken up that is number 49 ronnie mason defensive end sophomore out of durham north carolina if you're going to give up big plays on first down, that's what you have to do on second down in order to give yourself a chance to win uh, that series. And Mason did a, just a great job of not allowing himself to be blocked. Mason's just keying on Co someone. You know, they, it's clearly someone's got a key on Covington, and he keyed on him, and he got to him, and uh, he figured, I'm going to see how far you can run with me on your back. He just hopped right on him. Big third down series for Georgia Southern as well as the defense. Uh, for Costa. Third and eight shotgun. Clark looking left now into the middle. Threads the needle to Andrews. First down. Oh, I thought that one was going to get knocked down or picked I, off. And you can see at times why Georgia Southern staff is very excited about Travis Clark. He threads the needle there. I mean, it was a very small margin of error there. The window, as we call it, the quarterback, and you can see it from back, a very small window. Does a great job of fitting it between the linebackers. Yeah, number 34, Jamar Leith is reaching for it, but it is beyond his grasp. So our 7-7 game with under three minutes in the first quarter. And Georgia Southern on the march again. We've had two drives in the game, resulting in two touchdowns, one each way. Possession number three is almost in the red zone. Clark rolling left. In this time, he's going to give to number six, Lamar Lewis. And Lewis showing, I can run two, and gets it close to the 10. First down is a critical down for an offense as well as a defense. And right now, Georgia Southern is winning first down. They're getting 10 plus five, one series, 10 plus on this series. You see the replay. The fullback, Reddick, does a great job of getting the corner. And Georgia Southern is, being, is doing a good job of controlling the line of scrimmage. That sets up a first and 10 from the 11. And... Uh, it is technically possible to get a first down, but it's going to be really close to the goal line if they do that. If Coastal can J limit Jason it Jason Foster goal. is in at quarterback now. Jason Foster in the shotgun, and that's got the crowd excited. Foster, the quarterback last year, he's just going to run, run, design run all the way for Foster, and the Shanta clears. Smell that one coming, but they still let him get three yards on the play. One must very much disguise in there, but as I was saying, it's a very 
big series for the uh, Coastal Carolina defense. If they can hold to three points here, I think they'll feel good. As you see Foster catch a high snap. Several snaps have been high on both sides of the ball, and he just uses his speed to get to the corner as you see Coastal closing in. Look like an incidental face mask that got, uh, got overlooked on that one. 125 remaining. Foster gives to Covington, slammed and down at the five. And, and that was an op that was actually a, a read option. And you'll see that I think that's a great changeup. As we talked last week, Foster getting some plays here in a critical situation. Now you have people having to pre prepare for Travis Clark as well as Jason Foster. Option as well as a passer. It's just not enough time in the week to do it. Interesting changes of pace going on as Clark comes back in and gets under center. We've got Covington behind him and Reddick lined up to the left. He fakes the pitch and rolls left. He's going to oh, misread there as McCutcheon cuts one way. Clark throws the other way. Well, it was a misread because Quentin Till was all over him and he did not allow a great time to bring a blitz for the defense. And I think this is a win situation for the Coastal Carolina defense, limiting this drive to three points because it looked like Joey Sutton had touchdown written all over. So fourth down, Clark and McCutcheon compare notes over there. Well, I thought you were turning this shoulder. <laughs> but yeah, Quinton Teal is an exceptional DB and he helped shut that one down. 41 seconds left in the period. The kick is up and it is good. And so Georgia Southern pulls out in front, 10-7. And we have had three possessions, each resulting in a score. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. Statesboro, Georgia, the home of Georgia Southern and a 10-7 ball game here with 37 seconds left in the first quarter. I'm Mark Bryant, Tracy Hamm in the booth with me. Of course, Tracy, a star in his own days here at Georgia Southern. And uh, it was, it was as, they, as they sing in the song, it was 20 years ago today and all that stuff. You were, uh, they're doing a reunion today of, of one of your teams. Yes, we have the 86 championship team, 20 year reunion day, as well as the, the members from the 81 and 82 football teams. Georgia Southern, 25 years, six national championships, a number of conference championships, powerhouse program. This kick fumbled out of the end zone. They say he did not have control, be a touchback. Ooh, ooh, it's <laughs> that was that, <laughs> tricky right around that the goal line. That's the danger goal line. area. You know, I tell you, if you those are the kind of special teams, I tell you, I think right now what it looks like, if you have good special teams, you'll keep good field position. If you don't, you can get yourself in trouble. And this first quarter has just gone by very quickly. About a half minute left in the opening period. I want to see this again. He, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> he didn't, didn't have, really he didn't ever have control, but he's, he's real close to, you know, that's one of those where he's in the field of play when he starts, and he goes, goes out and loses the ball. You don't want to have one, a weird safety on a kickoff return. No, you know? no, no hurt, no harm. No harm, no foul, under 10 seconds. This is going to be a handoff up the middle, and that'll be the last play of quarter number one. And it's been an exciting one here. This is uh, living up to billing. First period is over. We'll be back with the second quarter. Georgia Southern Eagles 10. Coastal Carolina Shanta clears 7. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. It's going to be a second down play to begin the second quarter here at Paulson Stadium. Georgia Southern on top, 10-7. 15 minutes into this ball game and nary a punt has been seen. It is three drives, three scores, second and six. Thigpen, quick throw to his left. He's got a receiver, but only for a very short gain, maybe a yard. It appeared to be Perry Parks on the receiving end of that one. And once again, Morin finishes up the, the tackle there, but number 23 does the, does the damage there. Number 23, Ronnie Wiggins. Ronnie Wiggins does the great job of keeping outside leverage on the block, allowing Morin to come from inside to lay the finishing tackle on the receiver. Mooring, the senior linebacker there. He is candidate for the Buchanan Award for top linebacker in one double A. Third down, Thigpen in the shotgun. He's got pressure. He's going to take it himself and drag down the old horse collar tackle. <laughs> Big number 88, Shaheen Solomon 
with a small jig at the end yeah, of the play. If you make a play and you have a jig, you got to be a defense alignment. <laughs> And they call for the fans. Here it is one more time. He's got nothing downfield. He's got to do it himself as his pocket collapses. It almost looked like a quarterback draw, but then I think it was the pressure that moved Big Pen out of the pocket. You can't tackle like that in the NFL. He's gonna, he would get a flag for that in the NFL. It's the Terrell Owens rule, the horse collar. Yeah, they got all kind of rules in the NFL. <laughs> you, know, if you make that much money, you got to have a rule associated with it. Punt is away, sailing past the 40 and grabbed by Foster, almost drops his knee to the ground, evades the first couple men, but running laterally really gets nothing on the return. And the Georgia Southern Eagles will begin at their own 38, leading 10-7 This is our first punt. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Georgia Southern out in front, 10-7. And the Eagles with the ball, first and 10 at their own 38-yard line. 13-30 remaining in the half. This is a matchup of Southern Conference versus Big South, although I gotta tell you, Coastal Carolina playing four Big South games this year, four Southern Conference opponents this year. They're, they're trying for, you know, instead of dual major, maybe they're just trying for dual conference, Dan. Well, they wanna get into the playoff because they had a chance. Oh, the the middle. That's Greer. No, check that, it is Not Greer number six, not five, it's Lamar Lewis. Showing incredible speed bursting through the line. When you can get back up back and come in and hit the hole like that, but what a great offensive set for the offensive line that time. The hole was so wide. I'm going to put your cleats on. Look at the hole here that they created. Hello, look at that, and his burst is so good. Now it's a chase. And Coastal had a blitz from the outside that time. That's why you see number seven, the safety, Quentin Teal, coming from the outside, having to redirect there. Excellent job by... Lamar Lewis to make that happen. Junior transfer. Now they'll try to work the right side. And there's a flag down on the first down play. So we'll Look, see what that's all about. It's going to be a face mask, but we'll see. I'm going to go out on the limb and <laughs> there was a face mask. <laughs> declare face mask I'm going to declare a face mask against right. Coastal. And I hope the Coastal fans don't get too upset with me, <laughs> with me if I'm right. Travis Clark giving the preliminary indication that it is against the visitors. Let's have a look here. And it is Lewis again, and he, yeah, well, looked like he tried to get face mask and got the side of the helmet. Now the Coastal fans should be mad at officiating and not me because it looked like he may have not gotten the face mask, like his hand might have slipped off, off the personal file. Uh, I think it actually may have come at the end of the play after that. They were still grabbing at him as he's going down. Because that what, what we saw there was not a personal right. foul it face mask. I think not. it comes at the end of the, end of the play. It sets up a first and goal at the eight. And what Coastal has to do here, as you see the replay, we may get a look at yeah, it. One more time. We can sneak this in before the play. And well, his head does turn with that. It certainly gives the appearance. Lewis again inside the five. I think what Coastal has to do here is once again, when you're on the road, your defense has to bow us back here and not give up the touchdown and only give up the field goal. If they give up just the field goal, it's a win-win situation for Coastal defense, and it gotta be disheartening to Joy Southern offense if they don't score the seven points. This is a chance indeed for the Eagles to go ahead and make an early statement here. They traded scores early. The Eagles forced a punt. Now they could go up by two scores. Lewis with a little juke to the one. Is he at the goal line? Oh. He's close. He tried to sneak it across the plane, but they're going to say he's about, ooh, the six-inch line, And maybe? I tell you, that's tough football, and it's dangerous football when you try and stick the ball out over the goal line, as you see here. Coastal did a good job here. I thought they had to play stop right there. What a great job by Riddick, the fullback, coming off on number 55, the linebacker for Coastal. Ooh, that is close. Teal is the last man to bring Lewis down, but it's right at the goal line. It, mm. In any case, third and goal from just that much. Power formation, and Covington's in easily. He fumbles after crossing the line. Does a good job diving on it. The call's already made. He had possession going in, and what? Covington rewarded with the score. Well, Georgia Southern offensive line won the battle up front. Then they uh, were able to push. No, not even a coastal guy in sight um, to be able to stop the play. And they ran a little misdirection there. The, the motion guy went away from the the point of attack, and I think it may have gotten the linebackers um, out of sync there. 
trying for a 10 point lead now. Kick is up and it sneaks through. So it will be 17-7 home team. Georgia Southern out in front and looking much, much sharper than they did a week ago. There is Covington into the end zone. 17-7. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. All right, our score here at Paulson Stadium, Glen Bryant Field here in Statesboro, and we have the scoring drive there. You see it, five plays, 62 yards, 309 on the drive, and Chris Covington, the score. Chris Covington, 93 yards and a touchdown so far today. And what, what have we learned from Georgia Southern here today? Well, Chris? Covington got the reward, but Lewis did the work. And you can see that Georgia Southern has come back. And, you know, they've come back ready to play. I think Coastal has to settle themselves down. They have a veteran ball club. And what Georgia Southern has done is say, hey, look, if you're going to score, we're going to score. And we're going to see who can who can get it done. Arthur Sutton and Tommy Frazier back, but no one's going to return this one in the end zone for a touchback. So Coastal will begin with first and 10 on their own 20. Now we were looking around some of the other scores around college football today, a few interesting ones out there. Uh, one of the more interesting of the day, Michigan uh, just beating the tar out of the Irish today, 47-21 over Notre Dame at South Bend. Uh, for the Yeah, that is the interesting score there. For the Georgia fans, uh, Bulldogs beat UAB 34-0 today. And uh, elsewhere around the Southern Conference, App State a 41-0 winner. Louisville, you know, Louisville just spanked Miami today, 31-7. They That's hammered Miami. That's surprising. Auburn beat LSU by the score of only 7-3, the final. Big pen looking downfield to his left, and he's got Simpson. Simpson, the first man misses. Mooring, however, is right there behind him and helps slow him down enough. About 42-yard line for that connection. Big pen to Simpson is a money connection for Coastal. Yeah, just money. I thought the play selection was was the most important thing there because they didn't sit him straight back in the pocket. They gave him a play action. They ran the ball well enough to do play action, and you can see Joy Southern more and turning and running, and he goes outside with the ball to Simpson, and he made a guy miss. If you make a guy miss, you're going to get put. Yeah, it's a, it was, you know what? It's a good-looking ball, you know, tight spiral in all the way. Simpson is there, and he's ready for it. Hands up, makes the grab, turn and go. That, that's very crisp. That's football. very crisp, and that's what you call senior leadership by your quarterback. First down, pitch to the left side. And not a lot, a couple yards there maybe for Rashid Goss. And, and as a defense, you have to take something away, and Georgia Southern decide they're going to take the first down run away, and that's why I think if Coastal continue to play action on first down, they'll have much more success than trying to run the ball on first down. Rico Zachary in on the tackle, number one for Georgia Southern. Number on the jersey and on the helmet. You know, there was some speculation that they might not see the numbers on the helmets this year, but uh, you know, Coach Van Gorder can't change too many traditions or uh, <laughs> cause too many questions around here. He got rid of the option, or at least they thought he did. And never escaping the backfield because Mooring is setting up camp. Arthur Sitton tries to dance left, tries to dance right. There's nowhere to go. Well, you can see that they missed Mooring in the lineup last week because he just came up and he almost missed the tackle, but he held on with the hand. And that's why he's up for the Buchanan Award because his strength and ability to tackle the ball carrier, as you see here, Mooring missed this tackle is a big play. And you see he had done a good job of making him miss, but he holds on with one hand until his help came. And so third and long, third and 11 for the Chanticleers. 17-7, Georgia Southern leads, and they'd love another stop here. Home crowd cheering, Thigpen looking for his man. Throws really behind one receiver and almost crossed routes there. It was a little confusing there. A lot of traffic in there to try to get it in. A lot of traffic. If he'd have, if he'd have looked out in the flash, which I can see from up here because I have a good seat, but Andrew <laughs> per Perkins was wide open in the flash, and you'll see Perkins had his hands up. But when you up in the booth, you yeah. can. He's trying to get it to Rodney Burgess, number 80 on that, but he also has another receiver in the same area. And when you see that, usually there's a problem. Yeah, generally when you have that one receiver probably supposed to clear out the underneath, clear out the coverage and bring another receiver underneath uh, to catch the ball, but they never cleared it out. Fourth down, 8.52 remaining in quarter number two. Punt is away under pressure. Good job by Rob Williams just to get that one gone, and they're going to let this one bounce and roll because it is not a very deep kick. 
Well, I, I think we get into some critical points in the game now for Coastal Carolina. It, they've done a good job of, of being able to come back in previous ball games, but I think when you're on the road, you don't want to live like that. And the fans are booing about the spot because the ball was probably touched about uh, five or six yards from the twin, from the 30. And now they're going to move it up. So that's what all the commotion is about is where's the ball spotted at. Uh, I, and it's being spotted on the 37-yard line instead of the 30-yard line. So they will get a little bit out of that. There's Coach David Bennett. He's going to argue his case, but uh, there, there's not much to argue there. Well, just a critical um, set of downs for his defense. He hadn't been three and out yet, and he really needs to get three and out to give his offense some field position. His offense has not gotten in a good enough rhythm, and so this is a critical down for them because I think if they allow George Southern to march the ball down the field, it's going to continue to give George Southern confidence. Travis Clark, quarterback, lines up in shotgun, steps up as he uh, makes some changes here. A lot of no huddle for the Eagles. And this time he's he's looking for a little change of pace there as the Eagles give off to Marquise Maynard, number 26, the junior. And, and you see a lot of that no huddle. Um, it's really not, it's a, you know, different phases. This is no huddle, not hurry up. In the last two minutes, you'll see a hurry up where the play's being called sometimes two plays, but a no huddle is simply you just line up on the ball. Waiting now for the second and six. Clark looks to the sideline. He's got the play now. And spreads the word. With the snap, he'll give it right to Maynard immediately. Tries the right side. Nothing doing. A host of Chanticleers bring him down. Maybe a yard on the play. Nothing more. Well, I think Coach Ben and his defense understand it's a critical state in the game. They understand that they need a stop. And this is third down is a is a third down and five is a good good situation for your defense and also uh, gives them a chance to pin the ears back and get to the quarterback. So here we are with just over seven minutes remaining in the first half. They've got stacked receivers on both sides as Clark rolls left and fires downfield right on the numbers. Man. Excellent job. That's Andrews with the catch. Andrews has become the money receiver tonight. Clark, I'm very impressed with Travis Clark, ability to set his feet, throw the ball with accuracy, and you can see his confidence rising here as they pro the game progresses. He just delivered a great ball there as the break. Defender never really got a chance to get out of his break. DeWitt Myers is the DB, and he's really, he's right on him, but the but the ball is exactly yeah. where it needs to be. And I think that's a good offensive player beat a good defensive set every time. Says the former quarterback. Yeah, well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sure I'm there's, some, I'm sure there's some linebackers who would prefer yeah. to disagree. This will be a handoff on the left. Maynard piling through. He had an open space, get him about eight or nine yards. And, and as the game progressed, you can see Georgia Southern offense starting to get a little swagger, starting to get a little confidence. And I think Coastal has to come up. Wouldn't be surprised if I see some blitzes out of Coastal. As you see here, uh, Maynard carrying the ball, make a good cut there behind his block and lowers his head. I think Georgia Southern is getting a swagger. Coastal has to stop that. They never, they never had it last week. Never had it they last never week. Had it last never, week. but Coastal has to do a good job of either bringing some blitz, changing the momentum. They need a big play to change the momentum here. Second and short. Clark. Got Maynard behind him again. Reddick. Maynard will get the carry inside the 30. Rather not, not Reddick had Brett Meyer in as the uh, fullback that time, but Maynard did get the carry, did get the first down. They'll move the chains. And the Eagles fans have to be pretty content with what they've seen in this first half. They've got a 10-point lead. They've got the ball and trying for more right now. They've had really good use of the, of the clock, good mix of plays. I think what Joyce has done, they put number 93 at the tight end, really not expecting to throw the ball, but number 93... Dane Jensen is an old lineman at tight end, so they're really looking for the protection and the blocking more so than getting production. Mixing outside. schemes like that. Uh, Rick Corey Green has done the same thing. Uh, they've used him as tight end and <laughs> motion back and just put some put some beef out there. Let him block for you. Well, and certainly, I think that from a defensive standpoint, you can maybe tilt that in your favor where you don't have to really account for the tight end when you got a 6'4 uh, offensive lineman at tight end. You can really maybe load up and bring a blitz from that side or you can uh, bring your safety more so into play for the run game. 
playmakers in now. McCutcheon, Smiley, Covington, Andrews on the second down and eight for Clark. Still getting some signals in from the sideline. Takes the snap now. He's got pressure in his face. A little floater out of bounds. Nice job just to get rid of it because he was looking at a whole lot of Ronnie Mason. <laughs> He's a whole lot of a kid. He's a yeah. big kid. And that was a good decision, though, as a quarterback. Good decision. Good pressure by Coastal defense. Really trying to change the flavor of the game here because it's been tilted all Georgia Southern. And this is a big, big down for the Coastal defense because they need a stop. Tight end Hal Scarborough comes out and Jason Foster comes on the field. So there's a lot of offensive playmakers out there for the Eagles right now. Wide receiver stacked on both sides. Covington in there next to Clark. Clark fades back. Now steps up and fires down the middle. McCutcheon's got the catch at the 11. Just a great step up. I was a little surprised that Coastal only bought three, rushed three and dropped eight. I think anytime you do that, you don't put any crush pressure on the quarterback. As you see, only a three-man rush here. So you get two on one on two sides of the ball and just is able to step up and deliver the ball with accuracy to McCutcheon. He had the pocket he needed and 440 and counting down here in the second quarter. Backs in the eye now. Clark under center on the first down and 10 from about the 12-yard line. Covington through the middle. Man knocks him down to about the two, and I tell you what, that was just good, hard, straight-ahead running by Chris Covington. Chris Covington always seemed to have the biggest holes to run through, and it's just like nobody touches him until he's five to six yards downfield, and that means the offensive line is controlling the line of scrimmage, and I think, as you see here, nobody touches him until he gets downfield. Yeah, it's going to be number five, DeWitt Myers, who, who lays a shoulder. I mean, he, Myers ducking into the tackle. Covington almost could have bounced off of that and gone right on in. Didn't wrap him up. Second and short. They can get a first down before they get to the touchdown. Covington is close to that first down. Did not get anywhere near the end zone on that little drag play. But uh, let's see how close he is to the marker. It's going to be third and short. Well, and if you're Coach Bennett, you want to – put the decision back on uh, Coach Van Gorder because if you stop him here, you put a big decision in Coach Van, Van Gorder's pocket. Do, do you go for it on fourth down or do you take the points and continue to give your offense the ability to get confidence? Clark quickly under center. And whistles blow. Looks like we may have a timeout. That little muddle huddle there by Georgia Southern kind of got caught Coastal Carolina off guard, so they had to use a timeout. So that puts us at 3.20 remaining in the half. It is third and one from the three, and Georgia Southern trying to extend their lead. I want to remind you to get back to the football basics every Friday night on CSS with live high school football. Pre-game coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Spotlighting high school football from top schools around the southeast, and stay tuned for the live CSS game of the week, followed by our post-game show with scores and updates from around the region on CSS. If, if Chris Covington keeps this production, he's 10 for 102, one touchdown. If he keeps this production up, he's going to be thrown into he's going to be thrown into the um, player of the year, player of the week. Start with a player of the week. You well, get a couple of those. Covington was, was SoCon right. so player of the week in a loss, which you don't see a lot of that right, usually. Yeah. And, it, you know, and then there's Thigpen on the other side, who's Big South player of the week. Right. I mean, they, there are some stars out here. That, you know, these aren't these aren't the Miamis and Notre Dames of the Certainly. world, but there are some exceptional athletes putting on some star performances out here, and, and we're seeing a couple of them out there. And there's one right there, 28, Chris Covington. So he's gotten a little dirty yeah, today. He's gotten dirty, and that's a sign of a football player playing hard. So the third down play. If Joy Southern doesn't score here, if they don't get the first down here, do they go for it, or do they kick the field goal is the team got offside. They jump the snap. Trying to guess, trying to shut it down before it started, and they guess wrong. Well, and if they get that half the distance, that's going to give them the first down. Yeah, it, and if it's Coastal's defense offside, what a big mistake by the defensive line. Looked yeah, like he, it was the defensive line. Looks early to me on the, on the left. So you going out on the limb? Well, you know, you never go out on the limb. I do you sometimes. Never go out on the I'm limb. Still, they're going to back up. They're going to back up the offense. You didn't go out on the limb. Well, you know, nine, 93 on the right side is also hopping up uh, Dane Jensen in the tight end spot away from who we were looking at. So I, you didn't go out on the limb though. Yeah. Well, now it sets up a different scenario because if Georgia Southern does not get the, if if Coastal can hold them to a field goal here, then that'll 
and assuming that they get the field goal, it'll make it still a two two touchdown score game for so game for Colson is still a very manageable ball game. The question them. you asked before about going for it or not, I, I would have seen them, I, I would have envisioned them going for it on that fourth in tight with the momentum they had, but moved back I would definitely be kicking if I were uh, Coach Van Gorder, if they, if they don't get it here of course. So here's Clark he's got Covington, Foster McCutcheon lined up wide left, and he's looking that way, he's looking for Foster in the end zone oh no! Nice try, got some hands on it, but Quentin Teal is in on the play to help break it up. Yeah, good defense to stop. Coastal did just what they want to do with the aid of the penalty. That's how penalties change the ball game because now you have to take the, uh, the field goal, uh, attempt the field goal. As you see, a good ball, uh, had a chance to catch the ball, but I thought the defense was better than the offense. There with his hand, that little hand right there. That's just enough. Just enough to distract the receiver. So great coverage by the defense. And Joy Southern's had a lot of trouble in the kicking game. This is not automatic by no means. No, there, there so you really want to see the pressure by the defense yeah, here. Yeah, no gimmies. So the kick is up. Pressure was in. It is no good. You think he may have seen that pressure coming well, up? I, I, I tell you, Joy Southern's had trouble in their kicking game uh, from week one. They had it on the first drive, and they here they're going to have it again. So good job by Coach. Score is still 17-7 on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. 3-11 remaining in the first half. Georgia Southern on top, 17-7. So from that position at the three-yard line, and you're thinking if Georgia Southern gets a touchdown, and then it turns into if the Eagles get a field goal, which turns into empty. Yep. They got nothing. It's still 17-7. Coastal dodges one there. I like the defensive savvy. I saw the Coastal. Big pen looking deep. He's got Simpson, who makes the catch behind him on the fingertips. The guy is sensational. I love the resolve. I saw it the defense, and then to go for the big score at the offense. What a great set. That's, and that's what you got at a veteran ball club. And you've seen there that they have a veteran ball club very poised. One more time. Thigpen just going big. And there's Simpson. And I tell you what, if that ball's in front of him, we're talking about the touchdown. We're talking about a touchdown. If you're Joy Southern, you're thinking, how do we let this guy get behind us? How do we let Simpson get behind us? Who's their big play receiver? How do we let him get behind us at that point? But great operation by the veteran quarterback. Coastal came from behind more, more than once last week to win. He's got Simpson alone. He was turned around, Thigpen just hoping that Simpson would find it because he was not where he thought he was going to be at the start of the play. And what a great job by the quarterback. The receiver makes the play at the back end, but watch Thigpen. Pressure coming off the linebacker right behind the offensive line there. Just a great throw. What, what a He's great adjustment. He's just saying, adjust. go get this go ball. Go get the ball. Great adjustment. And isn't that what the, what the great receivers always te always say? If they just put it up, put it I'll up, go get put it. Put it up where only I can get it. And then what a turn of events. I like what I saw out of Coastal defense. And then you like him more what you saw at the offense as they attempt the extra point here. That uh, snap was a little low, but they still get it up and get the kick. And it's back to a 17-14 game. And how quickly that turns because we thought it was about to be Georgia Southern going up by three scores. Oh, my goodness. Wow, it's three points three instead. Points instead. I, and I, I, you can see it coming, but when you have a veteran team, you see the excitement. And they should be excited because they've come from being buried to slowly getting themselves up. They pulled themselves up off the rug. And now what they got to do is keep the momentum and continue to keep the pressure on Jordan Southern. You know, I said early that Simpson was a guy I, I'd seen play before, and I'd love to watch him play, an, an excellent wide receiver, but he's pulled off a couple plays already today that, that, I mean, they're big league plays. Well, when you got a quarterback who can throw under pressure, and you can see the pressure coming here, and he can maintain his composure as the pressure's coming off the corner here, and he maintains his composure very soft touch ball. Looked like it was going to be intercepted, but as it unfolded, you can see Simpson behind the secondary. Yeah, Brandon Eccles is reaching up for that, but he's not going to sky quite enough to get that ball. And, and if you're a judge, so you've got to be concerned. Two plays, a touchdown. Uh, just 80 yards in two plays. Well, talk about going fast. Get a fast break debate of the hottest sports stories in the Southeast on Sports Night. Weeknights at 6 and 11, only on CSS. I, I think what you've just seen is Coastal now saying, hey, we can throw the football against this team. And so now they're feeling more confident. No matter what happens here before the half, I think they feel like, hey, we can throw the football on them. 
All we have to do is maintain our composure defense, come to play some more so we can get a, another break. Maynard looking good on the return, past the 30 and the 40 to midfield and dragged down. Hope the kicker is in on the tackle. They're going to mark it at about the coastal 40. Special teams. Special teams will get you beat or they will win ball games on the road for you. We you know, didn't factor that into the... Yeah, <laughs> that's... You know, that they, they got playmakers all over the field. Both sides do. I love a good game like that where you know that anywhere you look, someone can do something sensational. The little hurdle and off to the races. Too many coastal players on the ground, not enough of them um, getting in on the tackle. Oh, Hope, Hope got a little grab in on got the face mask there. That kicker, you do what you can. You just don't let him score. They did not, uh, did not call that one. He started squaring up for a good tackle, then he kind of pulled off of it a little bit. This is going to Lewis, who makes a sensational cutback. What a move! He's got open space, and he's got Clark blocking for him for the touchdown. Wow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what a cut. That was a great football cut. Georgia Southern says, oh, yeah? <laughs> you can do it. I can, too. Give praise to Lamar Lewis. One more time. Everything's going left. Hi, Quentin Teal. Bye, Quentin Teal. Now, the play has to be made right there by number 34, Lee. Jamar Lee. He has to make that play. Uh, but Lewis, Just off camera to the left on that replay is Travis Clark running and gunning downfield saying, if I can get you the last block or at least run interference, then, then I'm going to do it. They get the extra point, and it's 24-14. Here it is one more time. Watch, Jamar Lee has to make this play right here, but he gave up on the play right there. You've got to make that play if you're on the road, and I know the coaches will see that, and they'll be. Look at Clark, unafraid. I want to hit somebody. <laughs> one play, touchdown. Oh, wow. The last three minutes have just been explosive. 24-14 is the score in Statesboro, and both teams living up to their potential today. Don't and, turn the channel because oh, you know yeah. the ball is about to go right back in the air, and we'll see if they can answer the bell here. You know what? Last week we were here with CSS, and we watched, well, we watched a, a poor football game in a lot of respects well, from Georgia Southern. They, just, they, they weren't ready to execute quite yet. They're ready now. They're ready. I, I think a lot of things surrounded that ball game. You can see the kids, they, you know, back to McKees of the game, they put football first, and you can see that they are ready to play. They have a good attention to the game, less penalties thus far. Penalties have not really affected. And, on, and on the, the turnovers. Play, last, on, last and the turnovers, turnovers correct. Early. Turnovers and penalties have not been a, as big of a factor as they was last week. And the crowd is into it. I think the crowd got taken out for a huge chunk last week, too. This crowd here loves points. Georgia Southern fan <laughs> loves points, and they love to be on the front end of the points. As you see the drive there, one They're, play, 40-yard drive. To call it a drive. It may be a bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> the scoring play, 40 yards, Lamar Lewis. That's the 40-yard sprint. There, uh, the, Lamar Lewis, 104 yards. Chris Covington, 102 yards. 200-yard rushers for the Eagles today. They will take the ball out. And we'll see if that was a wise decision for number 11, Chris McDonald. He will get a little bit shy of the 20. Not as bad as it could have been. And Coastal will start first and 10 at their own 18. Looked like he had disaster written all over, but he's able to get the ball up close to the 20, about the 18-yard line. Um, what you want to see here is you want to see Coastal continue to play. Remember the new rule coming in effect. The clock will start uh, once the referee put the ball in play. So that's certainly and it's um, running now. It's running now. And we know they can score fast. There's, there's nothing, uh, no question about that. Perkins will be in the backfield with Thigpen. Let's see if they try to pop a draw in here or a screen um, just to settle everything down. Tries a throw, crossing across the middle, and he's trying to do too much with too little. No! Still room on the left. And how do you get positive yards out of that? Jamar Anderson. What a great play. I, you know, you just love seeing the athletes on the field making plays, not panicking, keeping their composure, and getting up the field. But you could imagine they was going to run some type of screen here. This is just a, a quick um, screen back to the wide receiver coming underneath. It looked like it had nothing going there, and he just just making people miss. Uh, making the clock run, too. It's a minute 22. 
Second down, he managed to get out of bounds right at the end and, and cut it down, but a lot, of, a lot of clock eaten up on that one. Thigpen, under pressure, keeping it himself and brought down. Nice job by Big 88 Solomon again. Well, they had no backs in the backfield then, so any, as soon as you pass the offensive line, you're just going to be right in the quarterback face, and just a wise decision by Thigpen. 104 and ticking down. That new rule really affects the game, man. You know, the clock is continuing to run if you don't get a first down or call timeout. And it's, and it's an interesting situation for Coastal because if they get a first down and then move it out a little bit further away from their own end, they're going to probably want to go for it. And if not, then they want to get out of here. Wide open! Number 81, that's Jamar Anderson, the guy who made the great play in the backfield before. The and clock they, will stop while they move the chain. Yeah, and they still have two timeouts, so plenty of time to manage themselves. They want to get that three points back to get it back to a seven-point game. Um, it's a ten-point game right now, so we'll see if they can get it in field goal range. Anderson just wishes Thigpen kept the ball down because he had to leap for it, leap, left his feet, and couldn't, and couldn't maintain his balance there. Looks like they're going to go ahead and call the timeout. Yeah, I think it's a wise decision. You can have two of them. You still can throw the ball in the middle of the field with one left. Uh, you don't want to burn up too much time here, which they were doing. 37 seconds left, and they just couldn't get a playoff. So let's reset the scene, folks. It is 24-14. Georgia Southern out in front. 37.4 seconds remaining. And there's Coach David Bennett talking to his team hey, do I and this? we're talking football talking football returns with new hosts and a new attitude don't miss all the engaging discussions player interviews and live viewer calls if you want to stay on the pulse of college football this season tune in every sunday at eight only on CSS. i was just about to interrupt you before you wanted to do the pro bowl but i was going to invite you down on the field for the 86 championship team reunion i, uh, I would you love could have played I'm, with us too we oh, would love to have you on the team that's sweet of what was really. your specialty uh, what I'm doing right now, <laughs> talking. He was talking was the, in college. I was, the, I was the talking guy. Now, I, Tracy is going to go down on the field for a, a halftime uh, uh, salute to that team. I'll be, I'll be up here doing an interview, but I'll be with you in spirit all the way. Wow, well, that's, that's what I like <laughs> about my partner here. 24-14 is the score. Three wide receivers line up to the right for the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers. One wide receiver to the left. But that's Simpson, so I wouldn't yeah, overlook that. Kyle Simpson, that's for sure. <laughs> First and ten, ball at the 37. Thigpen rolls to his right, throws downfield. He's got a man, and is it? Yes, it is a catch. What a great catch! Great grab by Anderson again, who's been the playmaker on this drive. Well, I'm telling you, the last drive, they felt that they could throw the ball on Joy Southern. You can see their confidence as we get the replay. The rush comes inside. Thick Ten steps outside, delivers a great he ball. He throws a good ball. He throws he? a great ball. And the secondary can only just watch the ball as it lands in the receiver's hands. Thigpen has that touch that he seems to know where the DBs are going to wind up at the end because he puts it right to his receivers in, in the gaps. Thigpen now is going to roll left. He's got trouble. He's down. And that's a big play by George Sunco that makes them use their timeout. Number 22, Benefield, the first one in there. Terry on Benefield, linebacker, redshirt freshman out of Conyers. You know, the Eagles have two South Carolina players. The Chanticleers have six Georgia players. Recruit wars in uh, one AA. Oh, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of recruits in the house today. Yeah, a lot of recruits in the house Get, today. Yeah, <laughs> getting, yeah. getting a look at this program. They got to like what they see. Actually, they got to like what they see out of two programs here today. Certainly, um, you, you got to like If you're a receiver and you're watching Coastal play, you're going, I got to <laughs> get there because I got to get to that ball. Then if you join Southern, you're back, an old lineman. You got to say, well, look, I like what they're doing. I like this atmosphere. It comes down to atmosphere when you talk about college, what type of environment you're going to be in. You know you're going to be there for five years at least possibly four um, if you're on a fast track uh, I wasn't on the fast track yeah <laughs> they took the time with me uh, but it, anyway you, well, you gotta did get like two it. national championships yeah so yeah sometimes you have you. to slow down yeah, uh -huh. uh, to get the flags on the pole <laughs> so you gotta like what you see obviously both programs then you got to see the atmosphere that you're in and what a great atmosphere this is a great night for football as well Simpson for Coastal Carolina has 127 yards receiving and a touchdown Big pin, 184 yards in the air. Travis Clark, only 51 yards in the air, but didn't really need that when he's got a couple hundred yards on the ground from his boys, including over 100 from Lewis and, and Covington. Travis has managed the game well. Big pin has done what we expect him to do is put the ball in the air. 12 for 10, what a great percentage. As George Southern bring the blitz. 
And open in the middle. Oh, great job there, breaking up the pass. Number 35, Brandon Eccles with the contact as the ball arrived. Well, I think George Southern people are waiting on a blitz. They got a blitz. Um, the ref was warning Eccles about, uh, about showboating. As you can see here, the blitz come up the middle. Big Pin stands in there, though. He delivers a great ball still. The ball's right on the money, and you can see the ball receiver, defensive back get there by the same time. Um, so Coastal has to throw the ball to the sideline now or get a first down. It's third and 15 with 21.2 on the clock. Big Pin calling for the ball. Protection holding up this time. He's looking for all of it. Too much and intercepted and dragged into the end zone. Number two, Brandon Jackson. He gets away and tries to bring it out. He's past the 10, past the 20. Big play, Brandon Jackson. I, I don't think it was the bad as bad a situation as you thought. Thick pin really did a good job of going for it. He put the ball up there, just got away from a little. Good defensive play by Georgia Southern. Does a great job. You see the replay here. You want to see your receiver here go after the ball and try and break it up. But the defensive back was managed to make the interception. It looked like Santini Washington lost the ball for a second. Like he, he, he slowed up and then tried to figure out where he needed to be. It was too late. And then it was, it was Jackson. Jackson did a great job of, of following the ball. And what a great half of football as Judge Southern lets the clock run out. Excellent execution. Not a lot of mistakes. Good football half. Well, folks, if you enjoyed that, and you should have, uh, Stick around for half number two. It is 24-14, Georgia Southern out in front of Coastal Carolina. An exciting half of football to be sure. There's Chris Covington over 100 yards rushing so far. He had 200 last week. Let's see what he does this time. 24-14, Georgia Southern in front. Stick around, you're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. 24-14, the halftime score. Eagles out in front of the Chanticleers, and we are almost ready to begin quarter number three. Be very interesting to see how the second half plays out. Georgia Southern quarterback number 14, Travis Clark, with a good job, as, as we said, managing the first half. He is uh, doesn't appear to be feeling too well at the moment. Yeah, if you eat the wrong breakfast, it always comes <laughs> up at dinner time, doesn't it? I don't think he'll stay out of this one, but I, I mean, he's a tough kid. Uh, he's done a good job tonight. And I think as quarterbacking goes, the there's, that's first Chris problem, Rogers yeah, there, the yeah. guy behind him. It's only freshman yeah. behind Clark. And I think the thing you want to do as a quarterback, you want to be able to manage the game. And so certainly if Clark can't come back, <laughs> Rogers be the man who calls, hey, you're only one play away as the backup from being the starter. So I think he's aware. He has that look now that he's aware of that. So Clark taking his throws. Clark is a tough kid, though. Just yeah. a, looking for a great second half. I tell you what, Mark, I, I, points are going to be at a premium here. I think you'll see a lot of points tonight because what has been demonstrated thus far is that the offenses can move the ball, and whichever defense steps up will be the one that wins the ball game. How was it uh, to go down there at halftime for the uh, the reunion? The run was, I'm honest, <laughs> I don't have to work out tomorrow, so I've got my work. Hey, it's always good to see those guys. Um, we're really a tight-knit group. When you come from a small community at Statesboro, and a lot of the players came from some of the smaller surrounding counties, um, we're just a, one big family. Okay, we are set to kick off for the second half. Back deep for the Chanticleers, Tommy Frazier and Chris McDonald. And uh, here is the opening kick for quarter number three. It will be Frazier taking it at the five and trying to power through across the 20 to about the 21 yard line. And that is where the Chanticleers will begin the second half of play. Yeah, good, good, good return. I, I think we'll see who sets the tone, who comes out of the halftime speech first and does what their coach asks him to do. The coaching curve really begins at halftime and move forward because you know the adjustments you want to make. You can't always make them on the sideline during the course of the game. You can make some small adjustments, but the big ones come from if it's a scheme issue, you adjust some schemes, and then if it's a, um, a personnel issue, you address some personnel. But at the end of the day, coaches who will make the adjustment at halftime are coaches that are successful. You know, of the two teams out here, strange but true, the uh, only one out there to defeat a Southern Conference team so far this year is Coastal. They uh, 
They opened with Elon, lost that, but then beat Wofford, and then they got Georgia Southern this week. Big run for Perkins. He's across midfield. And right off the bat, I think Georgia Southern defense has to change their mindset. They've been run, facing the pass, 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 but you know Coastal wants to get back to running the ball, establishing that, the line of scrimmage. Here it is one more time. Just going to lay it right in the gut of Perkins, who started off left, moves right, and that's the right call. And off he goes into the secondary. Well, Rico Zachary has to make that tackle for Georgia Southern. Uh, you got to be disappointed in that effort, but then also you got to be happy with the effort of, uh, of Thigpen bluffs a handoff to Perkins there and keeps it himself. He's going to get to about the 41, 42 yard line. I don't think I'd be running Thigpen too much because he's been the he's been the diamond here. He's been the diamond on offense. But he can. That's just it. Yeah. He has over a thousand yards rushing in his career, so he can threaten that way. They haven't had to use him that way today. And I use him as little as possible because he has just a golden arm. I'm really impressed with Thigpen. And he's back to throw. Snaps one and picked off. Oh, what a grab. Great job there by Terion Benefield. Just stepped in the way. Just as I was so impressed with him. <laughs> but that happens to quarterback. I didn't mean to jinx him. I promise you, Co Coastal Carolina fans, I didn't mean to jinx him. But what happens, if it happens to quarterback, the defender comes from your blind side, and you never see him. You only see the offensive player, and you think he's wide open. And it was not a linebacker. It's an actually a nickel back that just moves over there, and he never sees him. Yeah, that's, that's just a great movie. He's trying to find Rodney Burgess. Mooring is the one coming in on the little delayed blitz toward him. And uh, he tried to snap that throw in, never saw the man coming. Clark will throw back to his left and overthrows Reddick. When, one more time with the interception. Well, you're seeing it from a different angle, but if you would see it from the quarterback's angle, you would see that he sees number uh -oh. 35 on his back. He never sees a defender moving over. And it's not a linebacker who's traditionally much slower. It's actually a defensive back in a nickel position. Bottom line, great play Benefield. Great play Benefield. Second and 10. Georgia Southern up by 10 with the ball. Reddick in motion. And the toss to the right to Covington, and he's got nowhere to go. Pursuit was on him all the way. Quint Taylor, free safety, did what all good free safety do. They're good tackling. And just a good defense. That was a good stop. For, that was a good stop. If you watch Quint Till here, he runs. He's got leverage on the back, and he never, and his foot speed, you can see his foot speed. He's just a big, menacing player. You know, he just does a great job of closing. Yeah, they, he's got... You know, he's got three blockers out in front of him trying to stop Anthony Steele, the linebacker, but uh, no one was on Quentin Teal, and he gets in there. Teal, an appropriate name for the shots that clears in their, in their teal pants out here today. A little, little dump there to Covington. Good enough for a first down. And that's the difference in a uh, cornerback making a tackle and a safety making a tackle. Right there, you got the cornerback coming up making the tackle number 13. That's Geiger. Geiger comes up and makes the tackle, Sergio but Geiger, yeah. Sergio makes the tackle. But when Teal makes the tackle, the back goes back, backwards. <laughs> but when a cornerback makes the tackle, the running backs continue forward. Score remains 24-14, 12-21 remaining in the third quarter. Backs in the eye for Travis Clark. We've got Reddick and Covington behind him. McCutcheon to the near side. Covington will run to the right. Tackle made promptly. And I believe, was that again Ronnie Mason in there on that yeah. one? Mason has played a, mm -hmm. a, a, a good, solid ball game for Coastal Carolina. And, and, and that's, a, that's good. The defense, anytime you can stop, to, stop the offense to three or less yards on first down, it's been a successful play for you defensively. And that puts you in a situation where you can bring a blitz on the, on the second down play. And it puts the offense in a situation where they're off schedule now. And they'll probably have to throw play action. Uh, but George Southern has ran the ball well. Second and nine, and Reddick goes in motion to the right. Play action, and now trying to go up top and cut number 81, Al Scarborough, the tight end inside the 15. Nice looking play. Well, it's the play action. You can see it being set up. They ran the ball, ran the ball. Second down and long is a great play action down. As you see here, the tight end who's been just not in the pitch for George Southern, and just a great ball for Travis Clark. He's got space, that's sure. 
but may not have the wheels. Quentin Teal just Quentin Quentin Teal once again. Right. And the play action froze Teal. The linebacker froze. The motion back took the cornerback out of the picture, and they haven't had to pay attention to the cornerback, to the tight end all night. So what a great play call. Let's see how they can follow that up here. First and 10. Foster quarterback. Foster running right. He's got blockers. Cuts back. He's going to get close. He's in. Now that was a great call by the offensive staff for Joy Southern. They motioned out Clark. They snapped the ball. The defense has to react to Clark motion. You know Clark's not going to get the ball, but they still had to react to him. And you can see that Foster had a lane. And when you get Foster this kind of space, he's the most dangerous player on the field. And great blocking by Georgia Southern guys. They did a great job right across the board blocking. Yeah, they sent Covington out there to, to draw defense, and then they let Foster do what he does best because that's how they got their first touchdown. Just Foster in, in traffic, finding his way to the end zone, and here it is one more time. And Foster is a kid that plays so well in space that you can see that he plays so well, and the explosiveness that he has once he sees the lane is just unbelievable. Once he sees where he's going, watch the step right there, and that's a good sign of a good, good football player. And that's gonna put Georgia Southern up 31-14. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. 11.07 remaining in the third quarter, and Georgia Southern has finally gotten that score they've been looking for to extend the lead. It is 31-14, but uh, I dare say no lead is safe for these two teams. No, certainly, and you'll see the poise of Big Ben now. Turnover is a good quarterback, mature quarterback. Doesn't really get caught up. He'll turn the ball over, but he'll come back and, and still uh, put the ball in there. Big kickoff for Dudley McDonald on the return. Ducks pass to... A bullet running past him in Greer and gets out to the 15, but there's a flag on the play. And usually on a return, that, that, that's yeah, not bad good. block. Not a lot good. of it. Yeah, that's not good for the receiving team. That is typically what we see in these situations. Our, our referee is Ed Rhodes, and yep. Now you went out on a limb. That's the first time this year you've been out on a limb. Man, you see, no, that's not so. Well, that was an easy <laughs> limb. That was a big limb to go out on. <laughs> Well, a very important series for the Coastal Carolina offense. Um, they're backed up, can't panic, plenty of time to go in the ball game. Still very early in the second half. You can and see right there, he pushed yeah, the ball back. He, he tried to pull off, but it was too late. And so, talk about poise. Thigpen's going to need every bit of it because he's going to line up in the shotgun with his heels on his own goal line. And, and you like to see him continue to run the football and not panic and just kind of establish the line of scrimmage again. And he fakes the handoff, keeps himself, and makes for a good run out to the 20. Very very good call. I thought the offensive staff of Coastal Carolina did a very good job not panicking, getting back into their rhythm. They know they had they're going to have to score and stop a score. So the biggest thing for them now is to get the ball in the end zone or through the uprights to get themselves back in rhythm. Yeah, Thigpen showed the defense a handoff to fullback Mike Tolbert, but pulled it back in and found himself some running room on the right side, and off he can do it. Off the option. There you go. Okay, a little, they're using it as a spice. They're not using it as the main dish out here today. That is Tolbert, the fullback, trying desperately to get yards. He bulls his way for two, but he was hit every step of the way. Morin continues to show that he is a difference maker on that defense, and you can see why he's up for the Buchanan Award, because he's an excellent linebacker. And there's a look at big number 47. Well, you know, the more plays he makes today, the more you realize how much they missed him last week. How important he is to the defense. And this week, it should be noted, they're missing another of their leaders out there, another senior linebacker, Jason Earwood. He has a concussion and is not playing this week, so Mooring really has to carry a little extra. Pass to the left, cutting back in the middle and finding space and still going, number 84, Perry Parks. What an excellent call. You got a blitz out the linebacker, so there was no pursuit to, to contain the underneath screen, and it was just a clear lane for the receiver. You know, that I see in Coastal some of the exciting kinds of offensive mix in terms of receiver routes that you've seen, you know, some of the great passing teams like, you know, like, say, a Florida under Steve Spurrier, where yes, they have yes. receivers just cutting and moving Florida everywhere. Florida State kind of offense. Florida, Florida State. State, yes. So many of those teams that have 
quality receivers that can use them different ways, cut them short, send them long, and Coastal is, is, with a quarterback like Thigpen who can hit them, what a mix they've got. Thigpen's going to keep again, I, but I'm not sure that was designed. <laughs> well, <laughs> what you see, they're spreading them out, and they're trying to keep the linebackers honest by staying home. The last play, the linebackers blitzed, so they had the right call against the blitz. And, 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 and that's all timing. You know, you, you film study, preparation, you kind of know what the team tendencies are to blitz, and they caught him in the blitz that time. Uh, I don't I don't think they want Thigpen really carrying the ball because he's really going to uh, show his worth in the passing game. Second and ten, three receivers to the right, quick throw to the right, and that's going to be number 81, Jamar Anderson, who made some big plays on their last touchdown drive, and he'll get a few. Yeah, and that's about if you're offensive, if you if you're a defensive staff, you, that's about all the plays you get out that screen. Both cornerbacks, one kept inside leverage, one kept outside leverage, and the linebacker was able to come in and clean it up. So that's what you want out that play. It's about an eight-yard game. Uh, this second down play, uh, now it gives both teams put them in a position to have to make a play on third down. And the fans try to raise a little bit of a roar here. Third and five, eight minutes left in the third quarter. Two teams really duking it out, but right now it's Coastal on the short end of a 31-14 score. Thigpen is surrounded and brought down, and the first man in, who else? Number 47, Maury. But, but the key was the defensive end staying at home and making him cut back. Number 88 for Georgia Southern. It's Solomon. Solomon stayed home and made the quarterback cut it back. Good stop for them. Maury coming off the blitz off the corner, and once he get a bead on you, it's just, it's just amazing. Actually, it was number 55. Beer standing home. You know, you watch Mooring's eyes on that play because he's got number one Perkins coming right at him. Just had play action to Perkins. He afforded Perkins about that much of a glance because that he knew the ball was still with Big Pen. Right, and that's you know if you if you're up for the Buchanan Award, you just have to be tough. Foster shows fair catch, but lets it bounce and roll, and it's going to go out of bounds at about the six. So a long field in front of the Georgia Southern Eagles, but they've got the 31-14 lead here in Statesboro. And you're watching CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. Seven minutes and 10 seconds left in the third quarter. Georgia Southern hosting Coastal Carolina here on CSS. I'm Mark Bryant, Tracy Hamm in the booth with me, and want to remind you to tune in every Saturday for a full day of live college football on CSS, live coverage starts at noon. Visit css-sports.com for complete live game coverage. Long field in front of Travis Clark and company. Coastal doing a little stunting on defense. Reddick goes in motion. And Clark will hand off to Lewis. Lamar Lewis trying to work the right. Cuts out further. Now cuts back in and he'll be out for a first down. The worst thing could happen, Coach, is they give up a big play on first down to move this to get them out of the, the back of the end zone. And you just got to do a better job of stopping. They had everything covered, it seemed, but the running back, Lewis, was just better than the defense that time. And he just made people miss. Lewis has shown the ability to make people miss with a burst. Yeah, Covington, definitely the number one running back, but I'll tell you what, Lamar and Lewis, give him a run for his money. Competition is always good. And this one is going to go back to Lewis again. Not going to get, not going to get it as much on this one. He'll push it to the 20 for a short game. And you really can live with two good backs. I mean, you really can live with that because uh, last week, in my opinion, watching the, during the game, I thought that at times Covington probably needed a break after mm -hmm. some of the long runs. And you really want to just get another fresh back in there, and you really want to be comfortable with the back in there. So uh, tonight, you've seen. Both backs, both of them are fresh. It's really win on Coastal Carolina defense. Under six minutes left in quarter number three. And play clock running real low. He gets it off with one second to go. Clark's handoff is to Lewis again. Lewis and Clark. Lewis and Clark. Yeah, they're just exploring the field out there. Lewis and Clark. Well, an expedition team. Now. Well, I think right now is one of the. Coastal Carolina, once again, is at a critical stage in the ball game for their defense. You can see, I think they're starting to get a little tired, and they've been on the field a lot tonight. And what you would like to see is you would like to see 
A big stop by Coastal to get that offense back on the field. Yeah, at this point in the game, time of possession is actually uh, officially close. It feels like Georgia Southern's been able to grind it out. 20 minutes for Georgia Southern and 18 for Coastal so far in this game. See, I, what I don't understand is you're in a no-huddle situation. How do you run out of time in a no-huddle situation? So I think it's some kinks that Georgia Southern continue to work out with that no-huddle look. But they're miles ahead of where they were a week ago. It's amazing the difference in, in looking at this ball from. It certainly is. And, you know, we talked about it at the top of the show that the greatest – when you, you, you know you have a good football coach is when the curve from week one and week two is you can see you can notice the difference and we've really noticed a different ball player up here today than we did last week. It's a third and five play coming up. What play 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 the coach? Put the coach's hat on for a second. What do you what do you go with here knowing what you've got in, in your uh, in your hands? Well, there's five minutes left in the third quarter. You, you really it's a, you really want to pick up the first down, but you don't want to turn the ball over in this area. And I don't think George Southern is really concerned about turning the ball over because they haven't tonight. So I, a draw or a screen is a real safe play. Um, get the ball to the corner. They've been doing a good job of getting the ball to the corner. If you get a play action off and get the quarterback outside the pocket, maybe he can run off though for the first down, which will make it a, just an easier decision for him. Coach Van Gorder stalking the sidelines. Coach, the coach Van Gorder and Bennett look like uh, long lost brothers out there. Their ball caps and their glares and their mustaches they and look stalking like the sidelines. Oh, they, yeah, they, you know, they look like they're from central casting for football coaches. They Certainly. really do. You can, I, and I would, if I'm, if I'm coastal, I'm, you know, I'm blitzing. I'm getting some pressure on the quarterback. I'm not going to allow him to get to the corner. Uh, I'm not going to allow them to pop a draw in there. I'm going to make the quarterback make a throw. Well, Coastal's not being too shy about putting basically 11 guys up on the line here. They're all in tight. Uh, I think Coach Ben and his staff understand the importance of this. They cannot allow the ball. They need this field position right now. And Teal finally backs up, so they do have a defensive backfield. They, they pull off a little bit. Clark looking left, pumps and fires. Nobody there. Foster, he was hoping, I guess, Foster would release. But it was well beyond everyone. Well, I think if we get a replay on that, we saw Foster take the middle of the field, which was wide open. Uh, same situation that you saw with um, Thick Pin with Thick Pin and his guys. Foster took the middle instead of he had the defensive back hips turned, and so he just crossed his face. They call that crossing face right there, and you can see, um, and that's just time operating with your quarterback. That'll come. It was the same situation you saw between the coastal receiver and quarterback where they made the play and Georgia Southern's not mature enough yet to make that play. So under five left in the third and Georgia Southern will give it back to Coastal and every stop is worth gold for Coastal now trailing by 17. Fair catch signaled and made right onto his rear end is McDonald and Coastal will begin at their own 37. 31-14 Eagles. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Georgia Southern up, 31-14, 4.47 remaining in the third, and Coastal Carolina needing to get down the field and put some more points on the board. Each team has scored in each quarter until now. Coastal empty so far in the third. Run to the left, number 33, Arthur Sitton. The sophomore from Greer, South Carolina. And, and you still can run the ball if you're coach, so that's good coaching. You still can run the football, allowing these guys to know, look, and telling Georgia Southern defense, we're not in a pass mode completely yet. You still can run the football. For, uh, for the folks watching back in South Carolina, a couple scores of note as the uh, South Carolina Gamecocks lead Wofford 24-10. Just starting the second half out there. Bethune-Cookman all over South Carolina State, 45-21 in the fourth quarter. And I tell you, that game is a home game for the Bulldogs, but they're playing it not in Orangeburg, but in Charleston because of stadium construction. Thigpen looking for help, none to be found, and he is down Solomon. The first time they've gotten, they've, they've gotten pressure all night, but they've got to him that time. The first time he had nowhere to escape. That means you got a good rush from both sides of the ball. And good coverage downfield. Good coverage downfield. Because his first look right. obviously is no good. Because now he's going to just, he's going to try and find space. Now you can see the whole defensive line got a great push. And just a big down for Coastal. So it undoes the uh, good run that Sitton had on first down because they're back to third and 10. Closer maybe to third and 11. 
On their own 36, 37 yard line, big pin play action, steps up, lofts one, Simpson that cannot sky for this one. That was the first bad pass I've seen big pin throw tonight. He got pressure, um, but that was the first bad pass. I, he had help over the top on the coverage. Uh, first bad pass I've seen him throw tonight. And you know, as, as much of a vertical as Simpson has, that one just too high, too much, could not, could not snare it. Well, they had underneath coverage as well as over the top coverage. Oh, and Clemson fans back in South Carolina didn't forget you. The Tigers out in front of the Seminoles, 6-2 in the second quarter. Oh, you heard me, 6-2. One of those little bootlegger punts. And it's going to roll and roll. They really don't want Foster touching. That is purely evasive. And, and that's what you call respect for a player who you know can do damage to you when he touches the ball in space. Well, you know, there's a lot of respect for Foster, uh, it, especially in the Southern Conference, because he made all-conference uh, wide receiver and kick returner this year, despite the fact that he was quarterback last year. He's two years removed from when he played wide receiver and kick returner, but when they heard he was going back to that, he made first team all conference. And, and people know that his ability, and I, I, what I saw tonight was Joy Southern gradually making a concerted effort to get him involved offensively. And here we go with 3.20 to play in the third quarter. Backs in the eye and three wide receivers out for the Eagles. Clark back to pass. Man in his face floats another one up there. Some A lot of air under the balls for both these guys right now. Well, and really, I'm surprised with the call. You've done a real good job. And, and if you're going to throw it, not if you're going to throw the ball, at least come off a of play action because you ran the ball really well today. So if you're going to throw the ball, instead of just a straight drop back, put the quarterback at arm's way with the defender and, in his face. And Clark got dumped. He got hit hard by Karibi Goss from Conway, the junior. Just, just laid him out. Move the pocket and let him get out the pocket and throw the ball. Goss, a, a junior on a team just swamped with seniors, Coastal. Covington, nothing Goss doing. And Goss, Goss again. He just decided he was going to take the game over himself this series. You know, I mentioned the seniors. Coastal returns more seniors than any program in 1AA this year. Uh, and, and that, again, goes a, a way back to that having that red shirt class, you know, intact. As you see, Goss make a, just a great difference to play. Two in a row. They need somebody to answer the bell for them defensively. And you like seniors on the ball club. You don't want this team dominated by seniors because you want them to teach some of the younger guys. But when you have a senior class, you want them to say, look, leadership is at a premium for our ball club. 227. And this will be a handoff to Covington. Works left, tries to pull back right a little bit. He'll be brought down by Jamar Lee. And there you see Chris Covington, a real workhorse for this team, but has done uh, some some really good things in, in terms of uh, sharing the load today. He hasn't had to do it all himself. Well, when you're, when you're a good running back, you, you want to carry the ball, you want to carry the ball, but you also understand when you're fresh, it's a long season, and when you sub in and out, and the other backs being successful, Lamar Lewis has been very successful, and so that gives you an opportunity to come back in the game and still get positive yards with fresh legs. 143 and counting down. The Eagles will punt it away on fourth and eight. Good kick. And Chanticleers will stay away from this one. They had Jamar Anderson back deep, but was not going to risk it on that one. And I think a wise decision. 31-14 decision. remains the score. Eagles with the advantage. But the Chanticleers coming back out one more time. I don't, you know, they've, they've come up empty a couple times here. They can't, they well, can't afford to do that too much longer. It's exactly what they did the first half. You know, they get a couple quick scores and then they just settle down there at, until late in the half. Um, Jerry Southern's played good defense as well. You got to give them some credit uh, for good defense. But I think if they get back to the game plan, pounding, play action, uh, they've been going to a lot of five receiver sets. Now they're going to more of a traditional set with twins receiver and pounding the football. And they'll do it with Perkins. Hit, hit, hit again. Mooring and friends bring him down to forward progress to get him two, possibly three yards. But the thing that has been impressive about Jordan Southern tonight is that they have not turned the ball over and they've minimized the penalty. They have one mm -hmm. penalty for five yards. And that was, at the time, was a crucial penalty because it was on the one, it was third and one from on the two yard line. Second down and eight. 
Tyler Thigpen had a really good game, but now he's in really big trouble. And number 91, Sherrod Taylor, the senior from Miami, Zach. And, and now, Morin won't get any credit for this, but him pushing Thigpen back inside right here allowed Sherrod Taylor. Sherrod Taylor to make yep. the play. So you, you got to, when you play defensive as a group, you tend to be a better defensive unit. Uh, when one guy gives it up for the, the next guy, you tend to make plays. We're looking at the last play of quarter number three. They they will have to get a snap off here. Third and eight. Thigpen looking downfield. He's got Simpson and another great catch. What can you say about number 19? Well, he's just a great football player, and Thigpen has a lot of confidence in him. Uh, the question I have is where was Zachary going? Rico Zachary, where was he going? The receiver clearly was running inside route, and he makes a play, and I think he thought he was going to, I thought the receiver saw him, thought he was going to get hit. So with that, Coastal on the move once again, but they are trailing. It is 31-14, Georgia Southern. And you are watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Thirty-one fourteen as we begin the fourth quarter of play, and Coastal's going to have to dig deep. They've got to get 17 points, and they got to get it in a hurry. But this team is capable of that under Tyler Thigpen. He's going to hand back uh, to his man number 33, Arthur Sitton. But I tell you what, Warren just disrupted that play. He didn't finish the tackle, but he hit him hard enough to totally disrupt the play. Sitton really didn't have uh, much to do, but uh, but sit sitting on that one. <laughs> Nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. What a play by Morin, though. He just, he just shot the gap and made a big big play. Coastal in its first two games has scored 15 points in the fourth quarter altogether. They're going to need uh, they're going to need 17 today to have a shot. Oh my goodness! He hits Simpson on the run. Simpson eludes the first man. He's still going. He gets past the outstretched arms, and he's in with the diving touchdown. Playmaker. Playmaker all night. You, we said it before. If he hits him on the stride. Hit him on the stride. Oh. And you love to see different makers get the ball. You know he's in. The, they, they feel good about what they feel in the ball game. And he just hit him right in stride. What a great throw by the quarterback. Said he needed points fast. Well, you know what? This is fast. Well, once again, Rico Zachary take a bad angle to the receiver and a great playmaker would make me pay for that. Brandon Eccles had a shot at him and Mooring was chasing and he was already long gone out of the play and Wiggins is trying to chase and That's, they're all chasing. They're all chasing. chasing that. Great play by Thick Penn and Simpson. Just a great job. Kick is up and that is good and it's a 10 point one game, one game with <laughs> most of the fourth quarter still most of the fourth quarter. That was a quick one. And that's the one thing that Georgia Southern didn't want, and that's exactly what Coastal Carolina wanted was a quick score. Now they feel like they can get back in the ball game. Uh, they're back in the ball game. It's just a two score ball game now, and it's more manageable for you, especially with all the fourth quarter left. Simpson, it, you talk about wheels and a little showboat. Mm, and a little. I'd have been very disappointed had they made it through a flag. Yeah, now. yeah. The dive for the yeah, I'm sure I'm sure he would have said I, I thought they were gonna catch me. I was just diving. I, what are you talking about? But uh, <laughs> but a little flash at the end shows the enthusiasm he's got. Just something about playmakers they can get away with stuff like that. That's uh I can imagine I Chad you. Johnson yeah. does the same thing in the in the Madden football commercial, doesn't he? And he had to be playing that, <laughs> yes. <laughs> couple a uh, couple of scores elsewhere in college football a couple seven threes of note uh, of course we already told you Auburn beat LSU 7-3 but at the end of the first quarter Florida leads Tennessee 7-3 and in the second quarter USC leads Nebraska 7-3 and this is this they call it separation Saturday but, yes. but I, I think it's fascinating that this that there's never been seven games on the same day of ranked versus ranked before this is the first time that's ever happened I, I think 14 of the I top 25 in seven games. And Auburn's going to, they living up to being all in, Auburn should move to number two now with Notre Dame losing. Kick is up and away, and Georgia Southern going to try and see what they get for field position, and Andrews is going to get that to about the 17 and no more. Pumped up for the shot to clear is number 28, Travis Kane. 
Uh, number 30 just just Kate, did what Kennesaw, it, Georgia making that tackle. Brandon Autry just sacrificed his body. <laughs> Brandon Brandon Autry just sacrificed his body and they called him the wedge buster. I think he was more busted up than a wedge buster. There's than. Andrews. Uh, he wants the ball. And he, you know, he's, and he's looking right in the eyes of Andrews there. He, give it to me. Great give it shot, to me. Great shot by guys in the truck. Want to thank our, our crew here, CSS and Georgia Southern crew. We had students at some of our positions, of course. And big, big thanks to, to uh, everybody making this go today. Our score is 31 21. 13.35 left in the game. What has looked to me is that Lewis has had a little more hop in his step than Covington. He's had a little more movement where he's made people miss a little more. Not that Covington's done anything bad, but Lewis has seemed to be the back that has a little more uh, movement in his step. Second and short. Lewis will get the ball again, and another cutback move. He's got open space. Good downfield blocking. Brought down from behind by number five, DeWitt Myers, and that's the only guy who's going to get him. And certainly that was an example of what I was talking about right there. He seemed to be able to uh, make guys miss, get to the corner with a little more speed than Covington. Now you can see here, everything's shut down to the left, and, you know, Coastal just does a good job, but the backside doesn't do a good job, and you can see he had the ability to get there. Um, and then when you get a run like that, you want to bring your backup in as Lewis finished the run. And he's brought down there by number five. How about, how about McCutcheon, the wide receiver, holding his block the duration of the play? Wide receiver out there, number 86. And Good certainly, job. Certainly you got to block people. McCutcheon come from that old option offense yep. where wide receiver blocking was a premium. Gain of well, about, about four on first down there. And, and it's really a big series for both ball clubs on the defensive side. You know you got to stop and you can't allow a score here. And Georgia Southern wants a score and clock. They want to chew it up right here. 12, under 12 and a half minutes left in the game. Reddick in motion. Covington gets the pitch. Left side. He's got some blocks. He's got, I think, a first down. And what a great change of backs here. You know, they got two real quality backs. And you can see the different styles. Covington, once you see the hole, he's downhill. Lewis, he makes people miss. Has the speed to get to the corner. It just creates problems. And you see the toss here. And you see Covington just puts his hand on his big <laughs> offensive line. Go, the back, go. go. And this a great job by his fullback. So he did a great job. Rest it ready. Cleared it out. And then, and then, but it, you see he's got his hand on the back of Brad Williams. Go, which I'm, I'm right here. Just go, just go Brad. <laughs> Brad's like, I'm wide up. open. <laughs> Brad said, I'm going as fast as I can, brother. <laughs> Fourth quarter, 11-37. And Covington gets the call, and he'll get the first down this time. He was about a foot shy on the last play. And you can see, you know, certain situations like that, you want Covington in the ball game because you want the downhill. You don't want to no illusion about getting outside, trying to make a, a great play. You just want to get the first down, and that's why Covington has been such a solid solid back and we call him a solid back he has 15 carries for 107 then you look over at Lamar Lewis he has ladder carries for 156 that last that last one actually went ahead and moved Covington up to 113 yards on the day so two running backs over well over 100 yards Covington with more positive yards here pushes it across the 30 and I think George Southern would prefer this instead of just one back they get two backs in there both backs are fresh because you don't want to you know, you can actually wear your back out early in the year with the, the number of carries. You don't monitor his carries, but when you got two backs sharing the load, it's just a better setup as Lewis coming and, in. The and game. when you add in Maynard, Foster, and Greer, you've got five different guys who carried the ball for uh, multiple carries for positive yards. It's a good mix to have. It's a nice, uh, it's, a, it's a luxury to have that capability. Clark under center, second and three. His team up by 10. Ten and a half minutes to play. This will be a pass to the right side. Some separation and number 80, Irvin Campbell getting his first touch today. And, and it's, what you see is you had a two tight end set. And Costa has to make a decision. Okay, we put eight men in the box. We got one-on-one -on -one coverage here. And they throw just a fade. Just a great ball. This is a great ball by Clark. Got some separation there. And just a great catch. Just a great pass and catch there. And Travis Williamson on him, and then he gets just an arm's length, a little, a little hand yeah, fighting, little no, hand no penalties fight. there. That's a great job by Cam, Irvin Cam. So Clark with first and goal at the four, 
Gives it to Lewis. Lewis working the inside, pushing the pile. He gets to the one, and a flag sails. Flags from both sides sailing. Now this is a critical call because if it backs him up, you know, George Southern really in prime position to go for the, the, the seven. It's been a really clean game. Only five penalties the entire football game. Only one called against Georgia Southern. Well, quarterbacks always know, and Clark's pointing the other way, and I'm going to go with the quarterbacks because I am partial to quarterback. So I'll go with Clark and says it's against Coastal. And I think see how I go out on the limb, yeah, I, see see, I, yeah, I just go out on the limb, I right? I just uh -huh. can't seem to get you to go out there with uh -huh. me, you know. <laughs> 10-10 left in this game, a 10-point game, and we're looking for, oh, yeah, there's there's some face masks. face masks on there. both sides of yeah, the ball. Yeah, and, that's, and fun, the funny thing is, that's not the call. The legal participation. Right? Yeah. That's just so they got 12 men out 12 there? men on the field. They thought they was in Canada with, when I used to play in Canada, it was 12 men, mm -hmm. and I'm always telling one man to get off the field, and they're looking at me like, hey, you're in Canada, man. Yeah, you, did you also tell them their field was too wide and too long? No, I kind of like that because <laughs> I can't get outside. <laughs> you wonder where your extra down, though, was, yeah. though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Second, first down became second down real quick to me. Georgia Southern has really done a good job. They put two tight ends here. We're going to pound the ball, pound the ball. Coastal put eight men in the box. Got one-on-one -on -one coverage outside. They threw the fade. They really, and that'll create problems for teams. First and goal at the two. Lewis pounds in, still pushing, trying to drive, but he'll, he's short of the goal line. He's down at the one. And I'm sure George Southern really want to take their time here. That was first down. They're in no rush. They want to get the seven, preferably on third down. But I guess they'll take it on second. Yeah, I think they'll take it you anyway. Know, but if you come. had it in a perfect world, you'll get it mm -hmm. on third down. Because that clock's just clock rolling, just along. rolling. And then this is where um, you know you want to see a ball club. Can you finish your ball club? And then if you're on the other side of the ball, coastal, you want to be able to make a stand here. With the Georgia Southern champ echoing from side to side and a 10 point lead. Covington gets the ball, the leap, and I think they stuffed him. Fumble. This is just exactly you want to stand there defensively. I think you got a fumble. They're trying to sort it out right now. And each side pointing, as you would expect. I think Coastal has the ball. And they haven't, they still haven't come I, out with I, one. I can't get you to go out on the limb here. I'm not going to do it. Because I think it's probably already changed hands three times down there. <laughs> Costa has the ball. The defensive defensive guy said they have it. Offensive guy. No word from the official. The runner was down before the ball came out. Is the wow. call? Well, that brings up the the, the, the the you can see the play here. We'll get to see. Look over the top. Nothing there. Great job by the oh, ball. Oh, he's oh, 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 not a very good call. Yeah, that ball is flying. How can the official coastal look like they had a chance? They to got get two it? guys landing on the ball. A big break for big the break. Eagles. Third and goal at the one. If they get a touchdown right here, Clark trying. Flags fly in. He will land short, but the call is going to be critical on this play. It's amazing how the game can change in an instant. Um, unfortunate for Coastal. Looks like we got a bad call by the officiating right there. With, clearly the ball was out. It's going to be probably a face mask on Goss. 95. Yeah, he gets his hand up there trying to reach Clark. And how can that not be a score? It, it looks like Clark gets across. Clark gets across. It's unfortunate. And a holding on the offense. So we talked about such. It was a clean game until this series of downs. Yeah. It's gone. It's gone completely out of whack right and it's here. Really, a very critical state for both ball clubs here. If Coastal is ever going to get back in the ball game, they need to stop and a stand here. Look like they had the turnover. Don't want to beat on that too much. But what about instant replay yeah. coming into effect? Well, you know, it's. You know, you got jobs out there. You know, you got real, you know, you got a lot riding on this. And you know, In really, major conferences, they'd have, look, they'd have looked at that looked already. At it, yeah, they'd have looked at it. And, you know, and I think it eventually will trickle its way, way down to one double A. Third and goal again. This time it's going to be a pass, and the man is open. Number 81, Hal Scarborough, the tight end. The tight end catches the touchdown pass. The, the tight end has made two plays tonight, oh, and both yeah. of them have been just big. You tend to forget about him, don't make many plays. Good job, good play calling, I thought, instead of pounding your head, good well, play they, calling. They smashed in, they smashed in, they smashed in. They came away with nothing over and over again. And now 37-21, hoping to make it 38. And Scarborough... 
the man of the moment. Looking to tack on the extra point. Coastal really needed that stop. They got the quick score they needed when down by 17 before, but they're down 17 well, again. And, and you really feel you really feel bad for Coastal. They did a good job. Here's the replay on the touchdown. Um, this this ex great execution by the offense there. But you feel bad for Coastal, even as we see the, see the replay once again. And with that, it is 38-21, just over eight minutes remaining in the game. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. 38-21, Georgia Southern out in front. Coastal not happy with the way that last series went down, and David Bennett especially unhappy and sharing his views because he saw that fumble. He clearly, clearly was a fumble. Coach has every right, Coach Ben has every right to be upset. His kids come on the road, they're playing their hearts out. They get exactly what they got to have to stay in the ball game. That could have put them out the ball game, and he understands that. And you hate to see that happen to a, a, just a class organization, class university like Coastal Carolina. And Deshanta clears, looking for good field position here. A flag flies. Three quarters of uh, of really all, nearly spotless football has turned into flag fest here late in the fourth. Yeah, and, and you know it's just a but in football you have to move on, you have to move to the next play. Um, talk about it tomorrow, but now what's important for Coastal is that they don't lose their composure. Um, instead of having good field position, they're going to be marched back, and we'll see if Dick Pink can get himself back on track and get the ball to Simpson, who's been the biggest. Big playmaker for them offensively. Yeah, Simpson, tonight. seven catches, 199 yards. Seven for 199 and two touchdowns. Hey, you be a great scout. You called before the game. You go, hey, I've seen this Simpson kid play, and he is spectacular, and he has been every bit of spectacular. I, 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 I just watch him, and I see things that I think that's one kid who, who should be looked at at the next level. Well, he's, he, he got the speed, that's for sure. He has the speed. And he's got about, the hands he, and the vertical. I mean, what, has, you know, what else are you looking for? He's, and he's every bit of six, three, one, yeah, nine. Yeah. And he's just a junior. There you and go he, again. Look that at that. And what a move to get a couple extra yards and an extra smack at the end as well. Simpson, that'll put him over 200 yards receiving today. And he has made every big play that they needed from him tonight. Just great hands. I, I think you coined it right. His hands. Uh, what's the first thing that jumps out at you? If you watch here, uh, big pin roll to his left, puts the ball. We're only just a down and out. And then out. like to see him tuck Woo, the ball there. Yeah, that's a little risky yeah. with the football while he's making that move, but right. clearly a hand big enough to hold that <laughs> ball. But I don't know if they want to see him doing that. Maybe they'll start uh, some defense will start paying a little more attention Spread to Red formation with no backs. Throw to the right side is caught and nailed. Oh, what a finishing move there. That's Eccles on the tackle. He just drills number 82, Santini Washington. What a great throw, though, by the quarterback. As soon as he cleared the coverage, he stuck the ball in between the safety and the underneath coverage, which is just all timing. And you expect your receivers to hold on to that. you got to get them to hold on that. He steps, throw right behind the, the coverage. Ooh. Just a great throw. Smack. And Washington, that's actually his first catch today. He's been thrown to before, but hadn't had the chance to make the play. Thigpen, keeping it himself, gets past the line, but Mooring starts the tackle, and it's finished by number 90, Sherrod, I'm sorry, Jerry Jerry Barker. Jerry Barker, number 90. Mooring started a lot of tackles. Now they're in their hurry-up mode. They've been no-huddle most of the night, which I think you'll see them in their hurry-up mode. They'll probably snap the ball with about you know, 15 to 18 seconds left on the play clock if he's being efficient with the clock because times are going to become a factor here. Big pin over 300 yards passing in the game. That fits his normal mode. He is always putting up big numbers, but he would like some more points. Throws it too high and too far for his wide receiver to the right. Number two, Rashid Goss. And that's the difference between uh, a playmaker. When you try to get your running back out in the flat, running back make it make an easy catch, make it a tough catch, and it makes a... Uh, uh, an incomplete pass, well, at least it stops the clock. Yeah, Goss, one of the hometown kids out of Conway, South Carolina. Coastal's got a beautiful campus down there, and I tell you what, you know, they've, they've built up a good program in short time, and they're going to be dangerous in years to come. You can see that 
Thigpen throws left. Got a man, but throws too low, and nope, incomplete. Jamar Anderson had to come back for it, and it was just too low, couldn't shoestring that one up. Well, you, you know, sometimes the incompletion is just as well because it stops the clock. Third down, big third down, fourth down play for him, so obviously they'll go for it. Um, tough catch, tough catch on the sideline there for him. Each team has had one fourth down chance today, and each team got their first down. I tell you, Georgia Southern was 8 of 13 on third downs today. Coastal was only third, 3 of 9, now 3 of 10 with that last play. And this, this is the ball game for Coastal right now. They can't really afford not to get this. Fourth and five, under six minutes left in the game. I'd be finding Simpson if I was in. They back off the rush. This is not going to get there. Dropped by Perkins. He throws. Thigpen going back so far. Finally finds the one guy he can throw to is Perkins. Basically at the line of scrimmage. Can't get any yards. Wouldn't have gotten any yards even yeah, if he caught it. Yeah, looked like they was trying to set up a screen. You got a flag down because of the ML's receiver downfield. So it looked like they was trying to set up a screen and the rush just, Joy Southern sniffed it out. Brandon Daniel was the first guy coming through, but then he pulled back. But uh, when he pulled back, two more came in. Well, anytime a defensive line to feel themselves getting to the quarterback that easy, I think they recognize it is a screen, so they want to retrace their steps. And so now we await the word from Ed Rhodes. He's going to wave it off. Yeah, they'll wave it off because he dropped the ball. So. <laughs> Fourth down becomes first down the other way. Georgia Southern with the lead and the ball. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. 38-21, Georgia Southern leading Coastal Carolina, and Coach Bennett continues to share a variety of uh, of thoughts with with, his, with all the officials here today. Yeah, he's, he's not he's not looking for a dinner date after the game. Uh, you got to give him a lot of credit though. Coastal Carolina is doing a good job with the program. Coach Bennett obviously is the right guy to lead them to where they're trying to get to, and uh, they've done a good job with that program. First and 10 for the Eagles, who would be content to just eat clock, clock, clock. Lewis gets the call, pounds through the middle. Elsewhere in college football today, how about Furman in the third quarter leading North Carolina 28-24? That is major for the conference. It's major for the conference, but I tell you what, it is a, it is a down year for the, the Tar Heels are looking, are looking bad. Everything up in the triangle actually is looking bad <laughs> up there right now. ACC's got some, some holes. Well, that would be the triangle would be North Carolina State, <laughs> Duke, and North yeah, Carolina. Yeah, there's, there's some there's some questionable football being played up right around there right now. But uh, and and Western Michigan beat Virginia 17-10. Ah, Georgia Tech struggled for three quarters against Troy before winning. Just like last week, Florida State struggled with Troy before pulling one out. ACC and Miami got dumped today. ACC is going through a bit of bit of pains right bit now. Of pain, man. Everybody goes through their pain, man. <laughs> you know, give it up for Boston College for pulling out two consecutive double overtime wins this season. They beat they beat BYU 30-23 today. And, and and BYU had a field goal that hit the goal pole mm -hmm. you know, yeah, before they, regulation yeah. ended up, so they had a chance to take the lead. And Boston College is. They play well in those type of ball games. You, know, you like to see a ball player play well in those situations. One of the games of the day in the ranked teams had to be Oregon over Oklahoma 34-33. And here we've got Lewis, same story, still trying to carry the ball and, and drag the clock out and move the ball forward. Four minutes and counting down, Georgia Southern with the lead. Georgia Southern slate, they're looking at, uh, you know, pulling even now, one and one and then getting into some conference teams. You see road games, Chattanooga, Western Carolina. They'll come back here for North Dakota State. Elon and App State in that stretch of home games will go off to the Citadel. We'll be back on the air here November 4th when Wofford comes to town. I get to see you again. Huh, oh, Clark? yeah, we got one more round up here. Three and a half minutes. Clark, Covington. Covington wrestles forward. It'll be third and about four, perhaps, on this play. It's amazing when you, you talk about a program and you look at Coastal Carolina and you look at Joy Southern and how a play here or there just really can change your program or catapult your program to a different level. When I look back at Joy Southern program, 
you know, it was, you know, beat from the national championship and all of a sudden you're on the national scene and then coastal here then coastal here you see Covington numbers 20 for 124 one touchdown real real good numbers and better than six yards a carry again for him it's two weeks in a row it's no 216 but it's still a pretty darn good number wow what a yeah. what a first two games for him. very good first two games you can see George Southern committed to running the football um, they, one back has 20 carries, the other back has 15 carries, and between them, they have 296 yards and two touchdowns. So that's a that's a call order, not the option option type numbers running the ball. Mm -hmm. You know, they're gonna go ahead and they got nothing to lose here just by going for yeah. it here. Just over two minutes, they'll eat some more time that way. And worst case scenario is Coastal gets the ball here at their own 30, their own 25 rather, and. Timeout and instead, like it's going to be a timeout. They just were using up the uh, play clock. And so you look at um, option type numbers on the ground, running the ball as Georgia Southern calls a timeout. And so with the score 38-21, Georgia Southern out in front, two minutes and 10 seconds left in the game. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. And with two minutes and 10 seconds remaining in this ball game, Georgia Southern in control, a 17-point lead, and they've got the ball fourth and short. If they get it, this ball game is over. If they don't, well, it's nearly the same. Clark running to his right, gets his first down, and now it's just a matter of running out the clock. Yeah, just a matter of clock got dinged at the end of that play, but you can see here, play action, not a bad call at all. Play action, look like even if Covington would have got it, uh, he would have made the first down, but Clark makes a good make somebody miss. You got to be able to make somebody miss. You got hit right on the oh, nozzle. Helmet to helmet at the end of that. Got hit right on the nozzle. Man. That's always tough in football. You know, you hard to keep that head up and then, bam, right there. Mm. You hate to get a shot like that right at the end of the game when it, when it's pretty much already decided. Yeah, you'll feel it tomorrow. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, you'll feel it for a few days as well. And he got dinged up, so we got a backup quarterback in the game. No, no sense in risking him any yeah. further. They're going to go with Chris Rogers. Chris Rogers in the 12. Give him a couple of practice snaps here. He'll give it to Covington. That, after all, is one of the best plays you can go with here anyway. They'll <laughs> get it down to the 15. That. Coastal Carolina, nothing to be a shame. He came in and played a good ball game, a, a, a play here, there, and they're right in the ball game. As you see Chris Rogers hugging him up. You can tell a guy that is. They got the clean uniform. You know, he comes in, the game's been a just physical ball game. He comes in with a clean uniform, man. You know, it's like maybe he ought to just take a knee and get it a little dirty. <laughs> he's got the, yeah, he's got the shining whites out there. This is where I really don't like the new rule with the play clock. I know it's not a factor here, but when the ball games get close, like it was last week, as we get ready to do the kneel, Joyce Southern get ready to do the kneel down here, it really just, you know, you don't give the opposing team a chance to win. And so we're under a minute. And rolling, rolling, rolling down. 38-21. Georgia Southern put 10 in the first, 14 in the second, seven more in the third, seven more in the fourth. So they've scored every quarter today. Coastal managed one touchdown each in the first, second, and fourth quarters. And when they put that fourth quarter touchdown in, lightning fast, you thought they're going to put a run in here at the end. But that was it. Georgia Southern toughened up, and uh, Coastal would not score again. Well, Georgia Southern bounced back to have a just a yeah. They, have good foot, they played a good, solid football game. The two things that stand out, no fumbles, no turnovers, and one penalty for five yards. Uh, so you can see Van Gorda got his ball club back on track. And they will not have to snap the ball again. The Georgia Southern Eagles will even their record at one and one. A very disappointing opening loss, 17-13 to Central Connecticut State. Forgotten for the moment in light of a much more energizing 38-21 win. The offense had it clicking. The defense had it going. Coastal Carolina, a very good team. We saw that with some sensational players with Coach Bennett and Coach Van Gorder talk to each other for a moment. They had a lot to say, a lot more than most coaches at the end of a game, which is usually a good game and bye. Yeah. Uh, but I think there's a lot of respect there because these teams went at each other. Yeah, they play hard, no football, good clean ball game. You can see the players that they expected to make the plays made them. Joy Southern tonight, I think with Morgan coming back in the ball game, it was a difference with him being in the game. And then Clark played much better. He, Travis Clark did a better job of managing the game. And I think we may be seeing a new star emerge for Joy Southern in Lewis. Lewis Lamar Lewis just had a 
real, real good ball game. He made people miss. He had the speed to get to the corners uh, that we didn't see last week. So once again, our score, 38-21. That is a final. Georgia Southern with the win. We'll be back to wrap things up in just a moment. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. And once again, Georgia Southern representing the Southern Conference, topping the Big South's Coastal Carolina Eagles over Chanticleers 38-21. And Tracy, your, our, your final thoughts on this one? Well, I, I thought Coastal Carolina came in and played a real solid ball game. Couldn't execute on a couple critical states of the game. Georgia Southern did a good job of controlling the line of scrimmage, getting the plays from people that they expect to make plays for them, and then Morin. I think Morin was the difference of the defense being able to come up with big plays when they had to. There you see the players kneeling in, in post-game prayer for Coastal. And 38-21 is the final. I think things looking good for both of these programs down the schedule. And on behalf of Tracy Hamm and everybody here with CSS, I'm Mark Bryant. Been a pleasure bringing you football here from Statesboro, Georgia. One last look. 38-21 Eagles over Chanticleers on CSS, your source for Southeast sports.